This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Macworld, when I... Mason. <laughs> no, 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 let's not start again. You, you've, you've struck gold immediately. What I'm going to do, I love Mac Weldon, our sponsor, so much, I'm going to change my name to Mac Weldon. And so when you address me as Mac Weldon, <laughs> that won't be you briefly losing your mind and being an idiot. That'll be 100% correct. And I'll be like, yes, I'm proud to be Mac Weldon. First name Mac, last name Weldon? No, Mac Weldon Mason. Mac Mason. Mac Weldon Mason. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, Mac Weldon Mason, you know this. <laughs> Boy, too much. Better than anybody. Actually, you know what? I've decided to change my name to it, but be completely ignorant of the product. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay, so it's, yeah, it, it's T-shirts, underwear, socks, sweats, jocks, mm. which is underwear. I yes. said that already, didn't I? Uh, that they're all famously antimicrobial, which ba- basically means they eliminate over odor. And they believe in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. Well, you were telling me the other day that you went to America. I yeah. mean, I knew that. Yes. But you said while you're in America, you wore exclusively Mack Weldon t-shirts. Yeah, I think I had a couple were, running ones, but yeah. That was, and, and then you and you said you're like, I, and you wore them for like multiple days in a row. It was so hot. Like a grub. Like and a grub. apparently you were fine. <laughs> yeah. So that's really good. Because it was so hot and I didn't have any washing facilities. That's true. To my, I mean, I could have gone to something. I didn't is what I'm saying yeah, and I didn't right. need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're great because it was like 40 degrees, which was like over 100 there like every day. It was crazy hot and I didn't care for it, quite frankly. Mm. But uh, not only do they do underwear, socks, shirts that look good and perform well, Mason, you could say that they're good for working out, mm-hmm. going to work, yeah, going on a date, mm-hmm. just everyday life. Mm-hmm. And that's if you can get it, you actually get 20% off, which is... Quite a lot. It's good, very good deal. If you go to macweldon.com promo uh, and use promo code Planet. Nice. Uh, yeah, they're, they're great. Um, I Mac Weldon Mason, one hundred percent endorse this product. You fant- better believe it. Ah, uh, fantastic. That's macweldon.com promo code Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Weekly Planet, official podcast of comicbookmovie.com, where we talk movies, comics, TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me is always my co-host, Mac Weldon Mason. That's me. <laughs> he was giving me like that, eh? Yeah, don't, yeah. don't mess this up. <laughs> Maintain the continuity from the ad spot. <laughs> if you've skipped the ad spot, now you have to go back. That's right. Or mm. None of this will make sense. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I... People ask me to talk about it, so I'm going to touch on it briefly. Okay. Uh, there was some. Alle- there has been some allegations leveled against um, some. And, so, okay. A, a lot of allegations. Well, I didn't want to quantify it. You know, I didn't yeah, have a specific right. number in my head. Mm. Uh, against Andy Signore of Screen Junkies, and uh, when that, when this happened, I woke up to it the other morning. It was just, what do you think of this? And I'd spent like an hour going through all the tweets and messages and messaging people that I knew to be like, is this a real thing? And whatever. What what's well, not so much this is a real thing. It seemed like a real thing, but, you know, mm-hmm. just to kind of get some, get some information. And so basically there's been a whole lot of uh, allegations and private messages leaked where he's kind of uh, enticing fans to come out and meet and, and stay with him and whatever, mm-hmm. which, which I mean, fine, if you want to cheat on your wife, that's... that's, <laughs> sorry, that's Stop saying that. Well, I'm just saying that's your call. I wouldn't do it, but I'm just... Because, like, obviously he's got kid, he's got a young kid, he's got that's a wife. Yep. I mean, that's... That's horrible. Like it's I, very poor form. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very poor form, but it's not illegal, I no. guess. But no, but there's there's another side to it. Uh, some of the people that he's worked with, there's been uh, allegations about uh, coercing women into sexual favors and threatening to fire this person's boyfriend and like interns and, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, look, I mean, already ca- came on Twitter. That's this is all horrible, obviously. Yeah. Like, and we, I mean, I don't know about you, Mason, but I am strongly against this. I'm also strongly against <laughs> this. You were trying to lure me into a trap there, but I'm also against it. And look, I've never met the man or yeah. seen any of his work, but people have emailed and been like, hey, well, you want to, you should go on movie fights or whatever. Mm. Yeah, when they clean house, maybe. That's, <laughs> sure. that's what's going to happen here. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I, I literally met him like a month ago and people asked, did you, you know, did you get any sense of any of that? Not at all. It was very nice to me. Everybody seemed to like him from what I could tell. I mean, I wasn't there for very long. I wasn't looking for and it. And you're a man. And I'm a man. That's right. So. And you're very ugly. <laughs> so. Sure. Yeah. And, th- and the thing to remember is as well about this, there are people at Screen Junkies who have come out against this. Everybody there, it seems yep. like, mm-hmm. producers, other 
other other other talent who work there and it's all up in the end the people that i've spoken to privately one person in particular doesn't know who's gonna you know if they're gonna stay on right yeah there's, there's a problem with the hr department there as well because they apparently knew of this like months and they didn't some people didn't, yeah i saw some tweets i saw some it. tweets that were like oh you've gotten back to me now like i, compl- I, I yeah. complained months ago yeah but you didn't do anything until until the news broke yeah. kind of thing that's it but the, the thing about screen junkies is it is it's more than just one person. Like it's oh, totally. there's, there's a lot of people work there. And, you know, I wouldn't begrudge anybody for staying on there just because there's one person there who's obviously done some terrible things. That mm-hmm. doesn't, that doesn't reflect on everybody. Obviously. That's true. So, yeah. So look, it's all horrible. I don't care for it quite frankly. Yep. Uh, like he's got a family and young kids. I just, I don't know. I'd, I'd, no good. No good. But hey, hopefully anyway, it all gets sorted out. And we've addressed it. Yeah, I've addressed it. I, now let's move on to some other news, which is probably a celebrity dying, just to lighten the mood up a <laughs> who little. Who did die this week? I don't think oh, anybody. Tom Petty. Oh yeah, Tom Petty died. That's yeah. a shame. Was he in any, mo- in any movies? Probably, but none that I've seen. Okay, cool. It's only two traveling Wilburys left. Is that right? Dylan and Jeff Lynn. I didn't know their names. What happened to the other? Uh, George Harrison. Yep. Died. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, and Roy Orbison died. What'd they all die of? George uh, Harrison cancer. Gunfight. <laughs> Together? Yeah. So they, who were they versing? Or were they versing each All other? All the Wilburys. Oh. Gunfight. And this- then only only, only Dylan, Tom Petty and Jeff Lynn were left standing and they're like, well, see you in a couple of years, I guess. Pistols at dawn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Tom Petty's good. Great. He yeah, was. he is. We've got some Planet Broadcasting live shows coming up. We do. That's true. Here's some good news, Mason. They're going to be in Sydney, mm. Australia. The winner is Sydney. A very good, mm-hmm. very dated reference, Mason. That's the best. That's the most current <laughs> reference I have. The 1994 announcement. Juan Antonio <laughs> Samaranch of the Australian <laughs> Olympic Committee <laughs> announcing that Australia had the 2000 Olympics. In 1994. Yes, that's right. Yeah. A 23-year-old reference. <laughs> that's as fresh as I've, I've got. I'm sorry. That's it. So basically it's five shows, five Planet Broadcasting shows in a row starting uh, the 1st of November every Wednesday until the 29th of November. Uh, so basically the idea is there's like a headlining show. Ooh. And a support show. Like you would a comedy gig, Mason. I love it. So the first week is Tofop, which is Will Anderson and Charlie Clawson's uh, show, which is fantastic. And, they've, they've and been who's, on this show. Who's, who's just slotted themselves in after that? Not us, Mason. <laughs> that's right. It's that's, uh, Claire's podcast, Just, just Make, make the, the Thing. thing. Yeah. Mm, wow. That's it. Who organized that? Was well, she it. said, do you guys want to do it? And I was like, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. not. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, like that's... like In many ways, she's taken the bullet there. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Uh... But I know she's she's lining up some pretty good guests as far as I can tell. Mm. Uh, after that's Don't You Know Who I Am and Hey Fam. Great. Another two fantastic podcasts. Don't You Know I Am, we just went on recently. It's Josh Orr's podcast. I'll link that below. That's true. It was us and the two, two in the, the Think, Think Tank, Tank guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. I had Which, a lot of fun on yeah, the episode. That was, was awesome. Great. So those... Um, we reveal some uh, funny little secrets about ourselves. Some little secrets ourselves. from our past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is... it's it, that, was, that was a lot of fun. And... Everyone was very funny. Mm, yeah. And pleasant. And pleasant. That's right. It was very gentlemanly. And also Hey Fam, which uh, it's, it's got like a combination of this and Filthy Casuals. A little bit of, uh, that's a newer one to the network. It's not new. It's been gone for like 50 episodes. It's Andrew Levins who's been on here before. Mm-hmm. And Angus Trux- Truscott who worked for Triple J. And it's really funny. If you haven't checked it out, it's definitely w- worth uh, checking out. Isn't it, Mason? Yes. Uh, the I've fi- listened. The following week on the 15th. And also every episode of their podcast is named after an episode of Entourage. Yes, until now it's named after that Kevin Smith tweet. <laughs> okay, great. Right. You know the one? No, oh, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Uh, the 15th, though, the 15th of November is our show and two in the Think Tank. Great. Which I actually recorded an episode with the other day, but that's going up on Tuesday. I'll talk about more links next week because people forget and whatever. So that'll be ready to go. So it's the 15th. Uh, that's us we'll be doing a show we don't know what it's going to be it's going to be about an hour uh, it's probably just this show probably just this mostly watching yeah. Us. Yeah. I, it's not going to be it's not going to go we're not going to recording it as far as I know or if we do we'll probably throw it up on Patreon that's the idea yeah I'd say it? so yeah, yeah. Mm. So, and it'll be different than uh, the weekly show so it'll be in addition so it won't be something we'll we won't go on this feed where you're hearing this the following week it's us again oh. on the 22nd and Human Ordinary uh, which is also Sam Roy's also been on the show. He's fantastic. That's true. Yeah, he's doing like a live. I don't know how he explained it. He explained it. What if he's doing wh- like a live storytelling kind of thing? Oh, cool! And if you've I'll seen that guy, off. if you ever seen that guy talk in public, he's great. He's Very really compelling. captivating. He's. I would have been. Yeah. I, would, I thought it'd be great if you know, because sometimes some people do live shows and they're the, exactly the same as their podcast. It'd be nice if his live show would just completely diff- different like he's like shoot he's got a t-shirt can and he's shooting out <laughs> stuff into the crowd and it's just like yeah jelly wrestling and you know he's got rave pants on yeah. he's just going for it 
So we're going to be doing two different shows on two different topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the 29th is Do Go On, which a lot of people love and Serious Issues, which is... Uh, what do you mean some people love? No, I should say... Are you implying you hate people, them? No, I listen to every one of those. Yeah, I think same. it's a great show. It's very funny. And I'm be meaning to do an episode with them, which is coming up actually. Ooh, uh, that's going to be... Uh, with serious issues with uh, Andrew Levins' comic book podcast with Siobhan. Cool. Now, tickets are a bit over 40 bucks, which is expensive. <laughs> and I understand that. But the reasoning behind it is everybody who doesn't live in Sydney is getting their flights paid for to fly up. If cool. you're doing the podcast, not people who <laughs> are in the, in the <laughs> No, audience. no, no. <laughs> that... <laughs> If you look, forty dollars is expensive for the ticket, but you do get a plane ticket. Yeah, that's in right. addition to that. <laughs> so you can, from anywhere in the world, we'll comp you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just to be clear, we will not comp you. Definitely not. No. And the other thing is, because it's two podcasts, then everybody can't. The idea is to get everybody paid as well. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I, we're going to hang around afterwards, have a beer and a chat. Yeah, let's My do understanding, it. Uh, yeah. Going to get that t-shirt cat cannon off Sam Loy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Just going to go all out. Nice. Also, you can get a fifteen percent discount if you use the promo code Podcast Dog. All one word, presumably, right? Yep. If it's not, I'll link it below. It'll it'll all be there. So even though the tickets are a little bit more expensive, 15% off is quite That's reasonable. Right. So look, if you're around for any of those weeks, I'll link it below. If, you, if you're going to see a couple, maybe see, if you want to see us, awesome. But maybe pick one of the other ones as well. Yeah, nice. See somebody else and su- support them. But uh, yeah, all that will be linked below. Right, Mason? Yeah. Right. This has been too long before we've been talking about the news. But now we'll talk about the news. News. Pacific Rim Uprising has its first trailer. Yep. The sequel to a movie that did moderately well that I didn't think was going to get a sequel. And it was pretty good for the fine. most part. It was fine. Yeah, right. Sure. Pretty good. The sword. Yep, there was That's a bendy <laughs> sword. There was a wibbly wobbly <laughs> bendy sword. That's it. All anything anybody remembers. Ron Perlman got eaten. Yes, but he was okay. Charlie Day ran around frantically and sweated a lot. Didn't get eaten. That's true. That the other they had a lot, another little greasy scientist. They had two little greasy they did scientists. Have two greasy scientists, yeah. Yeah. So uh John Boyega's uh, playing uh, the, the son of Idris Elba. Son of Idris Elba, mm-hmm. Pentecost something something. I was going to say I was going to say spicy Pentecost, but that's spicy not right. Pentecost. Let's say his name's Spicy Pentecost. Spicy Pentecost. The apocalypse has been uncancelled, despite being cancelled yep. in the previous movie. And now the world is completely fine. Yeah, it looks really tell. bright and shiny. And I new. think what they did is they went, okay, it's too much of a disconnect to have a completely destroyed world. And there's giant robots and there's giant monsters. Yeah. I think they went, you know what? An anime world or like a like a Voltron style world has a or even the Power Rangers world yeah. has a normal planet yep. with skyscrapers and, and and nice horizons and it all looks nice. Yeah. And then you throw in the wrinkle that is robots and, and giant monsters. Correct. Yeah. And I think they just went, Okay, well this this is this makes it easier. Yeah, right. But I don't know if I buy. It's too shiny fixed, for you. Well, they've just fixed the whole world yeah. in like. Well, it depends a how long years. it's been. It could have been. Well, it's long enough for Spicy Pentecost to have a grown-up kid. Yeah, so. but Spicy Pentecost would be close to fifty. Sorry. Yeah, that's the original guy, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he'd be close to fifty. So it's not unreasonable that he'd have a grown-up kid. That's true. Yeah, but uh, what do we got here? Look, it's there's it's, new color-coded uh, uh, kaiju. Yep, and there's oh, new oh. color-coded, what are the other things Jaegers. called? Jaegers. And also the kaiju go together to make a Voltron kaiju. Yep. They slop in together. Well, that's the other thing about this trailer is it didn't really, uh, really reveal enough and uh, much about the plot except for the entire plot. Oh, right, sure, yes. It's one, it's one of those trailers where, okay, uh, we're going to have some Jaeger versus Jaeger battles for some reason. Yep. We don't know why, but we know that's in there. We know that we've got some kaijus that are going to slop together into a giant Voltron. <laughs> maybe it's a kai- sport at the start because no, because there's sh- no kaiju because the world's all cleaned up. Maybe, but they are like it's like one must fall. We a do video s- game. You yeah, play that one? one must fall twenty ninety seven. I remember game. that game. game. But anyway, the point is, it's a good game, wasn't it? or another trying to think of another one. I'll think of another one. Then Rise of the Machines or something. What was it called? What? Terminator? Rise of the Robots. Where's the what? It was a, there was a game called Rise of the Robots. And robots. It was like Street Fighter, but robots punched one on One Must it. Fall? Yeah, but there was also one called Rise of the Robots. I'm not familiar with that. I'm familiar with One Must Fall. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> I get it. But One Must Fall 2097 was a spin-off to the original One Must Fall, which was Humans. The Robots was a sequel. The, so it was just Humans and one of them just had to fall. Yeah, it's not really that compelling, right. is it? Yeah, that's it's right. like Pit Fighter, Mortal Kombat. One of you will fall over. It's not the same, is it? <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but at one point in that trailer, like a missile hits a skyscraper. Yeah. So unless they're 
Unless it's a fun little sport that's going way out of hand. Yeah, right. I don't know. I I think maybe it's some sort of Civil War situation. Okay, sure. Not Marvel Civil War, but an actual Civil War. Oh, literal Civil War. Yeah. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Mm. No Charlie Hunnam either. You de- no, depressed? but Charlie Day is back. Yes, he is. But he's he's looking much more clean cut. He is. And the other slippery seems little to be scientist doing fine. is there as well. Who's that guy again? Ah, he's in probably looks, The Wire. <laughs> it looks like the son of Crispin Glover and the guy from Mouse Hunt. Yeah, right. <laughs> it does. His name it? I constantly forget. Yeah. No, he's in lots of stuff. He's always a... It's like a spindly greasy wizard or something. Yeah, he's a spindly greasy wizard. <laughs> yeah. Is he is he in a uh, in a in a Harry Potter perhaps? I don't think so. I'm gonna look it up. Let's both All look right. it up. It's a race to the what finish. What is it called? Pacific Rim. Yes. What's it called? My IMDb is still loading. Uprising. Up. Uh, that's right. And it's there's no colon. They were very specific about that. Good. Wow. Here we go. Here we bloody go, Mason. And his name it. Oh, that guy who's not Paul Walker's in it. Oh. Huh. Oh, his name is. I thought his name was Bum Gorman, but it's Burn Gorman. Burn Gorman, there you go. <laughs> he's yeah. in. Oh, he's in the Dark Knight. Oh, right. Okay. Rises. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So terrific. Yeah. Anyway, I'll watch this. Sure. There's why some not. nice color coded Jaegers. They look pretty good. It's in crimson. They've got little peak. missiles and and ball and like ball and chain mace situations and a sure couple of bendy swords. Yeah, some yeah. Light sabers. Light sabers. The technology yeah. seems to have been upgraded a little bit. He was in Johnny English Reborn and Fred Claus. Oh, and sex, the double and Sex the City and Me, which I don't think has anything to. Is that a like a that feels like an asylum knockoff of Sex in the City the movie? <laughs> yeah, it is. Like it's a Transmorphers, but it's a <laughs> yeah. wow. But for ladies, mm. all right, that that'll do on that. They're uncancelling the apocalypse. I just want to see a Voltron movie. I don't care about this, but hey, why not? Yeah, I like John Boyega. Uh, Same. Game of Thrones. Mason's going to be filming apparently right up to mid next year. Meaning, this is what that means. Yes. We won't get those new episodes, those sweet new drops, Mason. Those fire, <laughs> I'm try- other cool terms. Yes, you know what I mean. You're really nailing it. I love it. <laughs> until 2019, <laughs> we won't get those sweet Game of Thrones dabs until 2019. <laughs> Everybody's doing a dab on the set. You better believe it. Jon Snow doing, doing a, a dab. dab. Are you surprised we haven't seen any of the Game of Thrones people doing a dab on a Snapchat? I mean, they probably have. They probably have, we but just, we're we not in that it. wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What do you think of the dab? I don't understand what it is. It's yeah, I know what it is. But <laughs> there's nothing else behind that, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like planking. It's like teabagging. It's just a thing that people do for a amount of time, and then everybody hates it all at right. once. And mm. then somebody brings it back ironically. And then a politician will do a dab, <laughs> and it's all over. I think our yeah, Carl Stefanovic will do it on a morning show. Yeah, which is is it Australian I celebrity? Think, I believe and it's over. Bill yeah. Short and our opposition leader. Yeah, a couple of days ago was on radio and did a rap and a dab. No, he did it. He did. Look it up. All right. There's too much looking up on this show. I know, right? Shorten rap. Oh, no, he did. There's yeah. a picture of it and everything. Yeah. But that's in... So, for uh, non-Australians, uh, we had our rugby grand final. And I say our rugby grand final. I don't care about rugby, but... No, Mason, there was a gra- There was a grand final here, and they brought over Macklemore yes. to do his song, Same Love. And apparently, a couple of very conservative... Radio, like shock jocks. Mm. Uh, when Macklemore came on, to, like they they uh, broadcast the game, but when the halftime started, they muted the audio and played something else. And again, <laughs> conservative. One of the conservative radio hosts, Ray Hadley, did his own rap. Apparently, <laughs> again, so a conservative anti-gay marriage rap. Yeah, great. I uh, will not listen to that. I think I want to listen to it. Yeah, I know. Because it's right. not going to change my mind, is it? I'm not going to go, wow, that's that's fire and dab. So <laughs> that's right. I will. I, I, I've got the video up here. I might play it towards the end. I no, hope I'll, I don't. Or put it in. Not the, not the conservative one, the other one. Yeah, good. Unless Great. that, yeah. God. Bearing in mind, potentially could be the leader of our country doing a rap and a dab. My understanding is that Macklemore liked girls even when he was pre K. Is that correct? You no, know he did. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Here we go, Mason. Here yes. we go. There's a whole lot of hot t- hot button topics this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Punisher has been pulled, or was pulled from New York Comic Con. They were going to do a, a, a booth panel, and right? a panel and all that kind of thing. And the rumor was that as soon as the panel was over, that they were going to drop the entire series on Netflix. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. right. And obviously in the light of uh, what happened in Vegas. 
they mm. wasn't considered the appropriate time to do so. Sure. Yeah, which is, you know, look, if they had have released it, you know, I wouldn't be up in arms about it, but it, it, I think it's the right call to make. I mean, you, oh, totally, who, are you, yeah. you know, who are you upsetting a bit with that? Hey, speaking of the right call to make, yeah, we did go. you have that other piece of news there? I did. It's I've written Northrop G because I couldn't remember what the other Right, so said. there was Marvel also had a panel. Yeah. Uh, well, they were going to. They, there was going to be a panel where they're like, "We've teamed up with Northrop Grumman, yeah, and we've created a like a like an ad campaign for Northrop Grumman and like a super." But like, who, I didn't know who they were, so you okay, explain so who that is. Northrop Most Grumman know. are like a multi-billion-dollar company that makes aircraft and avionics for the war industry. Oh, I see. Go you on. might know them best. Okay, so here, here's the thing: uh, you might know them best as the creators of the B two Spirit stealth bomber. But what you might not know is that in 2008, mm. the Northrop and Grumman, the sons of the founders of the company and the current CEOs, were actually kidnapped by terrorists and taken to a cave in Golmira <laughs> where terrorists attempted to, like they tried to make them build a stealth bomber, but actually those they actually escaped and they realised that uh, war is not actually the answer and is causing human misery across the whole world. Really, And so they've... They've changed the company, so now they just make clean energy. <laughs> just kidding, not true. That's the plot of the film Iron Man. Northrop Grumman still make bombs. They're a arms manufacturer, and Marvel was like, hey, let's team up and let's make a fun little shield knockoff called NGEN, yeah. who are like, like a... E-N-G-E-N? Like N-G-E-N, which stands for Northrop Grumman right, yeah. Elite... Norks or something. I don't know <laughs> what it is. Norks. Nexus. Nexus. It's elite. <laughs> sure, yeah. Anyway, and they're like, let's. T-, and they were going to produce a comic where they team up with the Avengers, and it's like, hey kids, join this company that makes war, <laughs> endless war. Hey kids, you want to be complicit in endless war? And there was a there was out outcry. You were saying, oh yeah, people no, were just what, what are they Marvel, saying? On Marvel Marvel achieved the Twitter ratio, which is. You put up a tweet, and the number of negative replies to it is more than all the retweets and all the favorites put right, together. Right, gotcha, yeah, and yeah. And it's just people like, wasn't the, like the whole the linchpin, the cornerstone of the Marvel of Marvel Cinematic Universe is a guy realizing that is a guy who basically owns this company yeah. realizing that it's probably a really really bad thing to be mm. and changing his ways. Yeah, right. And they're like, nah. So is this not a thing anymore? So they cancelled the panel and the comic. Okay, cool. Imme- immediately. Great. So, pretty well, good. That, we've all missed out there. But also, there was, an ad, there was also an ad where it's like, here's the fiction, and it's a picture of the Stark Industries building, and here's the reality, and it's the Northrop Grumman building. It's like, <laughs> look at it. It's, it's so gross. <laughs> I feel it's like... That's strange. I, I'm, I'm surprised that Disney let that slide. It's weird, right? Yeah. Here's the thing, though. I think they've reached the stage where they think they're invincible. Ah, Like, okay. you know how Apple... Yeah. Like, well, it, this and Inhumans, there's been some well, missteps. Well, there's been some missteps. But you know how every once in a while we learn that Apple's manufacturer, like the, the company that manufactures Apple's products, are, like, horrible people. Yeah, they cut off all, like, Chinese kids' hands and stuff. Yeah, and, and but nobody gives away that. Nobody throws away their iPhone because no. they're like, oh, well, I've got, so it's, it's a, you know, I've, got, I've got all my apps on here and I've yeah. got all my contacts. It'd be real exactly. hassle kind of thing. I think Marvel went the same way. They're like... No matter what we do, people are still going to watch the movies and buy the comic books or whatever. Right. Let's try this and see what happens. It, and people were like, no. Nope. No, nah, not this one. Yeah, no. That comic wouldn't have done well anyway because it doesn't even sound interesting. No, yeah, exactly. They're weird shield knockoffs. Yeah. They've got the little jumpsuits on. I hate it. Anyway. Nah, no good. Nah, good on them. Yeah, good on them. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see the resurgence. Yeah. We'll see a Northrop Grumman TV series. Yeah. Love it. IMAX. Ah, <laughs> oh, so good. Mason, are you excited for the Hobbs and Shaw Fast and Furi- Furious spin-off movie, movie? So that's The Rock and Statham, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. It's actually pushed back. Uh, that's going to be released July of 2019. So that's pushed back, I can tell you ahead of time. Yes. That's pushed back Fast and the Furious 9. To 2020. Yeah. Are you happy with that? I'm happier than Tyrese Gibson apparently <laughs> is. I've got that tweet in front of me. Do you want me to read yeah, it? Yeah, please. This is the tweet of a madman. Yep. So here we go. He's not happy about it. He's, he's spoken out before about The Rock doing a spin-off film and he's like, it used to be about family and what... what. It seems a lot like jealousy. You're telling me that this guy wouldn't take a spin, a Tyrese Gibson spin-off? Yeah, absolutely. Where he just shrieks but here's across the, thing, the ice? Nobody would want nah. that because he's absolutely the worst character. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a series filled with awful non-characters, he's the worst character. Yeah, exactly. Even as an annoying, even as annoying comic relief, he's, he's the, the worst, worst character. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I, and I think Hobbs and Shaw are the most, like, I think they're all, the recent ones, are, 
they're fun. Sure. But Hobbs and Shaw were easily, have easily been the best parts of these yeah. recent films. I mean, the fact that they've tried to kill each other yeah. multiple times yeah. and realistically them becoming friends is com- complete nonsense. Because he killed Han. Yeah. Yeah. You know it. But, it's, <laughs> but you know, bearing in mind... By the way, gonna... it's Statham and The Rock, just for people who don't know who we're yes. talking about. Mm-hmm. We should just call them that. Really. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. But go on, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're going to brush that aside, yeah, they're the best pairing, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. This is from... Um, so wait, who 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 currently doesn't hate Statham and The Rock? Because Vin Diesel does. No, I think he, he put out a tweet or Instagram post that was pretty positive about it. Okay. Because yeah. cool. what else are you going to do? That's true. You know what I mean? Be in another triple X movie? Yeah. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. I don't know. I don't know how well that movie went. Hashtag PSA. Congratulations to At The Rock and your brother-in-law, aka Seven Bucks producing partner, at some guy I don't know, for making the Fast and Furious franchise about you, <laughs> Dash. <laughs> And like you, DJ, even if they call, I will not be deleting this post. GN, folks. See you in 2020, April. Hashtag fast family, right? Nah. It's all about Team Dwayne. D-E-W-A-Y-N-E. That seems wrong. Uh, <laughs> hashtag three years, will it'll be worth it. Wait. That's a question. Mm-hmm. Hashtag no sure, just Hobbs will be another. Hashtag Baywatch. Question mark. Guys, guys, just relax. <laughs> I'm just a passionate film critic. <laughs> Boy, is he ever. Are you sure? That Are reads... you sure that isn't actually a Shakespeare sonnet? <laughs> so beautifully constructed and did sensical that, it did was. Did you catch any of that? No, I think, well, some of it, but I think when... I mean, I didn't read it very well, did I? People, no, but I mean, people, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, what do I do with I that? I mean, people shouldn't, you, just write words. <laughs> just because hashtags exist... Doesn't mean you should make everything a hashtag. It also appears as if, and I don't know this for a fact, that Instagram doesn't really have a character limit. That's true. Or yeah. Or if it does, it's this is this is a paragraph. Yeah, you can write a whole nonsense. essay. Nonsense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love it. The end. Guys, guys, just relax. I'm just a passionate film critic. That's true. Shut he is. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> he would see him on at the movies every week. No, that's <laughs> Margaret it. and David and Tyrese. Now, Mason, I'd love to talk about the Star Wars and Justice League trailers. Which but we will, can't. We can't because they're not out yet. No. Uh, the Star Wars one may, probably won't even be out by the time this I goes thought you were gonna. I thought you were going to throw it on me all nah. of a sudden. I'd like to talk about these. Here I, they are on the big screen. I did actually and then see- you open the walls and there's a big screen and everyone's cheering my name. <laughs> well, May, so, <laughs> May, so, watch the trailer. Watch the trailer. You can do it. We will leave it here. I mean, yeah, that seems unlikely. But no, very unlikely. <laughs> yeah, dream, you, you we know? don't have the budget for that. <laughs> no. Especially for a audio medium. It seems mm. like a waste. That's true. Uh, but the ju- a new Justice League trailer will be out by now. I don't know if I'm going to even watch it, though. I think I, I think I know enough You're about done. that film to kind of... Well, you have to break it down, Go then. into it. No, it's, it's like the third or fourth one. When's it's it out? It's like a month. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll wait for it. The Star Wars one, though. I've seen, actually, a tiny bit of it. Oh. Um, looks, looks good. Cool. From the tiny, tiny bit of it. When you say you've seen a tiny bit, do you mean like... A second of it, or do you mean like a tiny little sliver yeah, of the like screen? Yeah, like a sliver. You've seen a it's celluloid. A, you've seen two minutes of a sliver of the screen. Everyone was cheering. Oh, there's a foot. Or, or, oh, there's a Mason. Mason. Oh, and then, and then so the, good. the screen got stuck. And nice. I had to watch it through, <laughs> peek, <laughs> peeking through the curtain. Yeah, uh, sure. Both of those will be probably good. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we go, Mason. You excited for the Gambit movie? No, <laughs> because of the character, because of the casting. Because of the pick, because Doug Lyman. Well, see, I don't know who's in it anymore. Jenny Tatum he is still in it. Okay, yep. great. Uh, that's all. I think other people left. Okay. Uh, that apparently because of the success of Logan, yep. they, they can go a little wild, made a little a little bit wet and wild. Oh, ugh. So that that means they. Ugh. Do you reckon that mean they don't, they're going to do the sock mask that we would see? Because Logan would give them the confidence to pull. I off don't the, think they'll do the sock pull mask. Pull off the dumbest Look, costume. Look, I'm kind ever. of ex- I'm I'm kind of interested. Once we see this next round of X-Men films, I might be sort of reinvigorated, you know, because one's going to be a horror movie and one's going to be a sci-fi thing or something. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, but I mean, if what if they made this kind of like a, like a New Orleans kind of like heist kind of film? That'd be fun. Well, you're in luck then, Mason, because the director apparently they're talking to is Gore Verbinski. You familiar oh, with his work? Sort of. Mouse Hunt came uh, up earlier. Oh, yeah. The Ring, the American version. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen the original, but I quite like the original Ring. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, bit of a fun oh, romp. Yeah, okay. The Weatherman, Nicolas Cage stopping his son from being molested. Oh yeah. And he has a crossbow or a bow and arrow. We've Wait, seen that. 
Is the weatherman the one where he slips into a parallel universe where he's not successful or something? No, you're thinking the family man. Yeah, okay. Which one's the... <laughs> it's the weatherman when he's an arms Nicholas, dealer. No, that's, that's Lord of War. Lord of War. Right. It's the one with Nicholas Holt plays his son. Have I seen that? We, I watched, we watched it at your house. Huh. We, I, 100%. There you go. You have seen this. Wow. Uh, after that, he did Pirates of the Caribbean. Unless I broke it and watched the weatherman <laughs> in your parents' living room. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Yep. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Both of those are... What was the second one? Uh, the second one was the giant running on a wheel. The third oh, yeah. one was the big... So when you said, I'll enjoy this, you, you, you were kidding. <laughs> it's up and down. Okay. And then he did Rango, which I haven't seen. The one with the lizard? The lizard, lizard boy in okay. the desert. And so they're giving him an X-Men movie. And then he did Cure for Wellness with Dane DeHaan, which was uh, earlier this year, I believe. Great. Which apparently a lot of people did not care for. Terrific. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, he might be doing Gambit. I don't think it's a great choice, but he's got some good movies in there. Yeah. You know, he can do he can do fam- he can do emotional weathermen with crossbows. I guess that's true. He can yeah. do running on a big stone wheel, which I know is your favourite thing. Mm-hmm. He can do a mouse hunt. I mean, I, that is my favourite thing. <laughs> people love mouse hunt, mouse hunt though. I've never seen it, but I know there's people are big fans. Lee oh. Evans is his name. I've just remembered. That's the guy from Mouse Hunt. Okay, yep. gotcha. Mm-hmm. The other thing, which well, I- you know what? I guess here's the thing about Gore Verbinski. Yep. He seems like a guy who'll do what he's told. Yeah, sure. So yeah. if they've already built the movie, essentially, yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah, that doesn't sound good, though, does it? No. I don't, now s- that I think about sick it. Sick of fine stuff. We yeah. get good stuff or real bad stuff, mm. please. That'd be good, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig is also rumoured for Mr. Sinister. Oh. What do you think of that? He's got a weird head shape, so yep. I think it'd be a better blood shot. I was thinking about that today. He could be a good blood shot, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Sinister works, though. Is that, is that the wa- a waste of Daniel Craig, though? Like, Mr. Sinister? Yeah. I mean, it depends what they do with him, because these X-Men villains come and go. Name all the X-Men. Oh, do they? Magneto? He's in it quite a bit. Oh, <laughs> I know. I'm thinking of the last blue, big blue guy that they fought. Apocalypse. Uh, Apocalypse, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No good. It's and true. before that, they fought robots and Peter Dinklage. Correct, yes. <laughs> and the future. Mm-hmm. What was before that? Kevin Bacon. He was good. Uh, okay, I'm, just, I'm gonna stop. No, no, this is the reminiscence <laughs> hour. Here we go. Okay, before that it was uh, Leave Schreiber and mm-hmm. the Dad from Thirty Days of Night. You know it. Before that it was Magneto again, mm-hmm. and also a bunch of generic X Men yep. running across a facility. Mm-hmm. The one before that was oh, and Dark Phoenix. The one before that was what was it? A striker. Yep. And a man in a wheelchair. And Magneto again. And Magneto again, sort of, but he was also good. And the one before that was Magneto again. Yep. Did I get them all? And Toad. And Toad. Toad was and good. Sabretooth. Mm-hmm. Man. Gosh, we've movies. remembered some things, haven't we? Oh, <laughs> yeah. movies, you're right. Anyway, excited for Gambit? Nah. Yeah. But it'll be nice to see a movie advertised with having Channing, T- Channing Tatum and Channing Tatum's actually in it. I think be... it'd just be nice to, nice to see a movie also. Yeah. Yeah, good. good wouldn't it? Oh, what's that card effect going to be like? What was it last time? I don't think did he even use cards. I don't think he did. No. Yeah. Terrific. <laughs> he had a stick. He had a stick and no sock on the head. I have no memory of Gambit. Oh, they fought on a fire escape or something. Yeah, he was climbing and Wolverine was cutting the fire escape. Yeah, okay, I sort of, yeah, I sort of remember it. Okay. Yeah, this is unsurprising. Bride of Frankenstein, the follow-up, the second film in the Universal Dark Universe The Dark Universe, universe terrific. Movie, has been delayed, uh-huh. but I've written here, but probably cancelled. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So this is the statement that they put out. After, after thoughtful, thoughtful consideration and bean counting, presumably, mm-hmm. Universal Pictures and director Bill Condon have decided to postpone Bride of Frankenstein. For about five years, <laughs> then we're going to try and reboot it again with a different name. None of us want to move too quickly to meet the release date when we know this special movie needs more time to come together. Bill is a director whose enormous talent has been proven <laughs> time and time again. That's the end of the sentence. Bill is a director. <laughs> Deal with it. And there's just a photo of all the production staff with sunglasses on, just like, what are you going to do about it? Oh, my kid's coffin. And we all Your look- kid's coffin? <laughs> Mate, that's going to give him self-esteem issues if you've built him a coffin already. <laughs> it's a novelty coffin. Oh, okay, cool. And we look forward to continuing to work on this film together. This is it. No, this is <laughs> Yeah, they're done. totally done. The other thing is they. Uh, I read that Angelina Jolie, who was playing Bride of Frankenstein, is still on for now. Which okay. means she'll take the next project and this will all go away. Oh, absolutely. Or, well. they'll, or they'll recast with Rachel Weiss in five years or something. I also read on Twitter earlier mm. that at one point 
uh, Angelina Jolie offered herself as a honey trap to catch Coney. Remember Coney? What? Remember Coney 2012? 2012. Remember we were all going to get Coney 2012? <laughs> Apparently she was like, I'll be the bait. We'll get Coney 2012. How stupid would Coney 2012 have to be to fall for that? Oh, yeah, very stupid. Would you fall for that? No. Yeah. I'd assume there was a trap. Yes. The trap being Brad Pitt. <laughs> In 2012, certainly. They were at the height of their... They were. Yeah. The thing about this is, you're not, you're not going to do it, obviously. I don't think I've told you this, Uh-oh. but my uh, my review for The Mummy has been copyright struck and yeah, removed, right. legally removed, and yes. a strike on my YouTube channel, which means if I get three, the whole thing shuts down. Yeah, right. Under the premise that I'm not allowed to talk about a movie. The Mummy. Because the DVD came out. Because the I DVD assume, came right. out. Yeah, that's exa- I think that's because it happened all at the same time. So I told you I was thinking about making a video, which was just me going, hey, the mummy's fucking terrible. <laughs> right. It's just me in it. You yeah. can't copyright strike this. Make sure you never buy this film or watch it anywhere ever. Yeah, right. Look, I had no problem with the mummy. I mean, I did. It's really bad, obviously. Mm-hmm. But that's just, it's, that's very that's uncool, form. man. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Because they were, I assume, because they were like, you've used copyrighted footage, but you're allowed to for purposes of review. Yeah, I also, use. I get sent this footage. Like, I get sent so exactly, it Exactly, they're use. like, hey, why don't you review yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, even if I didn't, you're allowed to use it for review and, and critical analysis. I see. So, yeah. So, basically, the last thing I sent to them was, was the rebuttal, which was, if this goes any further, you have to take me to court. Cool. Yeah, which I don't love doing, obviously, <laughs> but I'd be surprised if they did. Please don't. <laughs> right. But, hey, we'll see how that goes. No, you're going to have to defend yourself in court with your <laughs> ill-fitting suit. <laughs> you're wearing an ill-fitting suit and one of those judges' wigs, one of those grey wigs. <laughs> you're in an American court. They're like, what are you doing? Don't do that here. Uh, I didn't have time to press my suit. I folded it up in my briefcase. Okay, here we go. Mason, you'll love this. Oh, I think you've genuinely... I... <laughs> this is, this, you'll like this. You've, you know that Danny Elfman is scoring the Justice League movie. Fum, 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 yes. fum, 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 Justice League, yes. Correct. Uh, we've heard before he's going to bring a version of the John Williams Superman theme, oh. but he's going to flip it on its head, Ooh. if you can imagine that. He's going to do a dab. He's going to do a dab. So Dabby fire. Elfman. <laughs> Dabby Elfman. <laughs> he's also apparently going to include elements of the 1989 Batman theme. All right. Which, the reason I think you'd love this is because it lends credence to your theory. They're set in in the the same same universe. universe. Even though there's many things to contradict your theory. Like what? Like that the ages don't line up. Nah. Like that they Alfred fell in a Lazarus pit. Okay, fair enough. Or he's hush. Yep. Maybe he's hush. Bruce Wayne used to have a perm and a turtleneck and now he doesn't. He doesn't even wear glasses. Fashion baby and LASIK surgery. Okay. (laughs) You can LASIK hair straight? Yeah. Is that a thing? No, but you can do it with your eyes. I'm sorry, what? You LASIK surgery on your eyes. Oh, I thought you meant... why doesn't wear glasses yeah. anymore. Okay, gotcha. Yep, good, yeah. good, good. Did I mention the glasses? I yeah, may have. Okay, you did, good, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine, they're set in the same universe. What do you want? Yes. And also, because I mean, you're talking about this is the second Joker and there was a Robin and blah, blah, Hopefully, blah, and all yeah. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that means it's also set in the Schumacher universe. Unless Schumacher's not canon. Well, yeah, we can pick and choose, can't we? Exactly. <laughs> Anything's canon, whatever you want that thing to particularly be. Do you have anything else to say about that? No. Nah. One last thing. Um, Do you find Danny Elfman jarring, like the a Danny Elfman score jarring? Yes. Yeah, Depending so on what it's in. I guess that's true. Uh, but yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, I f- uh, that whole p- pairing of him and Tim Burton I find jarring in, in general, though, yeah. That's true. But he did do... Did he do Spider-Man? Yes. He may or he may not have. Let's look it up. I think, yeah, he's done stuff that I haven't found jarring. Mm. All right. Did you read the first six issues of the Doomsday Clock? So first six pages? Pages, sorry. Yes. Yes, yes I did. Uh, it's the new Watchmen comic. Spoilers for this. Oh, yeah, so massive I feel, spoilers. Yeah. So if you haven't read it... Uh, so Doomsday Clock, for people who don't know, yep. is a... It's, it's DC's big event that's coming up soon, their comic book event. Yep. Uh, Having that, another crack at the Watchmen, baby. Yeah, so this is this is something that uh, they've always said they were never going to do, but now they've run out of ideas, so now it's something they're actually going to do, yep. and it's uh, something leading out of DC Rebirth, and it's going to be somehow they're going to combine, they're going to cross over the regular DC Universe and the Watchmen Universe. Correct. So spoilers for this, we see the first six pages of this. It's set in 1992, mm-hmm. which is... Seven, Seven years yeah. after the original Watchmen-ish, yep, sure. I think. 
Um, Off the back of... So at the, at the end of the original Watch, Watchmen, the squid monster gets dumped in New York, kills millions of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ozymandias seemingly gets away with it because the reason he did it was because the world was going to unite against a common threat. And if anybody... And uh, Night Owl's left with the the dilemma that if he tells everybody that he's done this... Yep. Then the world will fall back into war. And so... Yes. But he, Ozymandias has got him over a barrel. But, but, in, but in this, it turns out that almost immediately after... Because at the end, the Watchmen ends with... Yeah. Uh, Rorschach's journal, which reveals the secret. Dear diary. <laughs> exactly. Uh, being pulled out of the crank file yep. of a of a, a newspaper mm. and somebody's going to read it. And so apparently in by 1992, the world has discovered that the exploding squid in New York City, yes. the New York City exploding psychic squid event <laughs> was in fact the, res- the, the, the work of Ozymandias. He's now the most wanted man in the world. He's disappeared. Yes. Uh... And they're hunting him down, and 1992 has become a very thinly veiled allegory for 2017 America. Yep. Because basically, I don't know, it's Trump's America, essentially. But with there was a squid. Except there was a squid, <laughs> precisely. The squid has accelerated yep. fascism in, in America, I guess, and yes. whatever. Anyway, yeah. uh, but the big reveal in this is that Rorschach is still alive somehow, despite being turned to... He was atomized. He was atomized at the end of him. He was re- it was reduced to a greasy spot yeah. in the ice okay. at the end of Watchmen. Well, the question is, Mason. Yep. It's obviously not the real Rorschach. Or it is the real Rorschach. It's not. Who do you How think do you know? Is? I think it is the real Rorschach. You think that uh, um, the blue guy brought him back? I think Dr. Manhattan didn't kill him. I think he took sent him somewhere else. I think it's Night Owl. Oh, okay. Because he's he's seen what happened to the world. Right. And he's like, nothing means anything. I'm going to eat beans and kick people in the head. But he's he's speaking in Rorschach's like journal yes. voice, which suggests to me that it's the same guy. Because otherwise, the see, the clue would be if he was speaking in Night Owl text boxes, yeah. we'd be like, oh, that's Night Owl in a Rorschach mask. But how would that? that's an insight in Rorschach's mind. Sure. So unless Night Owl's mind has broken as well, and maybe it has. That's what I'm saying. Mm, I don't know. I don't buy it. I just don't think people would... I think people would be very upset if they brought back original recipe Rorschach. I mean, <laughs> yes. people are going to be upset because they're doing a sequel to The Watchmen. Mate, I wonder how Alan Moore feels. I bet he's fine with it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I bet he hates it. <laughs> yeah, look, I... It's it's intriguing. I bet at this point, because you know how uh, when Watchmen the movie came out, Alan Moore said, "Take my name off the credits." So it, it, now it just says Dave Gibbons, a movie yeah. illustrated, you know, based on the graphic novel illustrated by Dave Gibbons. Yeah. I bet now, like Alan Moore's, like he's got his lawyer on, and he's like, "Can you have them say very specifically, like on the front cover, Watchmen was created by Alan Moore, but I hate them so much, <laughs> and I'm just putting my name on this." just so I can say how much I hate them, please take it off again. <laughs> Put my name on there and then scratch it out again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Does any part of you want to see this though? Read this though? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, me too, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I never read before Watchmen. You did. Yes. And it was fine. Some of it was better than others. Some of it's better than others, yeah. But I am interested in catching up on this world. It does ruin kind of the point and the ambiguity. Yeah, it sure at does. The the, at the end yeah. of the first one. But that's the thing. The, the age of storylines that end on any kind of ambiguous note is kind of done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's no that's uh, I mean that's I think a complaint that a lot of people had about the new Twin Peaks. Yeah. It was like, what does this mean? What's the solution? What's the flashing lights mean? We've put them through a Morse code thing and we'll <laughs> determine what the secret is. There is no secret. David Lynch, when he made the original Twin Peaks, just put some weird stuff into a TV series. Yep. It doesn't mean anything. And now he's just made another series that doesn't mean anything. Did and you watch you- it? No. I, mean, no. I don't care. <laughs> uh, and everybody's jumping through hoops to figure it out. There's nothing to figure out. Right. It's just ambiguous for the sake of being ambiguous. Same with this. Mm. Well, it's not the same. I mean... Watchmen's deliberately ambiguous, so you can use your own mind to think about what might happen in the future. But no, there's no time for that. <laughs> Here's what happened in the future. I do that like is the past. I do like the time jump. Yeah, I like uh, that. Yeah, they're, they're, look, a lot of this I I do like. I, yeah, I'd rather they didn't, but hey, they're going to do it, so I'll at least give the first couple a go. Yeah. Jeff Johns is doing, is that right? Yeah, and apparently this is like his. This is his magnum opus. This is the thing he's most proud of. So The sequel to a comic that shouldn't have had a sequel written by a guy who hates the idea of anybody continuing his work. Yes, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I re- yeah, again, I, re- I look, I don't know, but I don't think that's Night Owl. 
in that suit. Okay. Well, I think it's. I think maybe you know what because Doctor Manhattan. I, I'd have to. I'd have to reread it, but I. I'm fairly certain he was I reckon just they, blood. But that's the thing. Like I think the 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 loophole might be that he doesn't definitively say, I am going to turn you to ash here. Yeah. He might be like, I have to get rid of you. I'll put read you it on, later and I'll figure it out. Put you on Mars or whatever. Yeah, I mean, he might have teleported him somewhere else or maybe he did kill him and he's yeah. like, well, the other, well, well, I'll just bring him back. Dr. Manhattan do that. reassembled himself. From nothingness. From nothingness. So, so it's, it's very possible that he could be back. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think also Dr. Man... I don't know. Would Dr. Manhattan wise up enough to... Would he want Rorschach to be back? I mean, I guess his opinion has changed because of what's happened. Yeah, since. exactly. Because the idea is also this crosses over with other DC books. Yes, it's going to bleed into everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. remember the button, the button, the button. <laughs> yeah, well, this is going to be a this this is going to be a, a Superman story as yeah, well for exactly, the most part. Yeah. Apparently, it's going to be so. Aussie, not Aussie man. It's going to be Doctor Captain Manhattan. Captain Dickout versus Superman. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. I don't, I don't know. know. Man. Okay. I'm well, kind of looking forward to it. Yeah. But. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we all look forward to some things and other things, and not so much. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right, Mason, we've got to talk about our topic for this week. Yeah, topics. Blade Runner mm-hmm. 20049. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did. Good, excellent. We're going to do a non-spoilers, which is going to be difficult because straight out of the gate, there's so many things that we don't know about this movie that's revealed like in the Immediately, first Immediately, that's true, yeah. So that'll probably be a brief first section, but we'll, I would say if you are interested in seeing this, yep. do not listen to any of this mm-hmm. because... We'll probably have to reveal some story points to kind of talk That's about true, it yeah. vaguely. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there'll be a very definitive spoiler section. Just quickly, a lot of people have asked me this. If you're, f- uh, if you're a fan of the first Blade Runner, I'd imagine you'd love this, correct? Yes. If, you're, if you've never seen it, do you think you could go in and enjoy this? I think so. But do you think you should maybe just watch like a five, ten minute recap? Ah uh, no! Wait. Yeah, well, it, it does enough kind of flashbacks where yeah, I don't you think you have to. And this is kind it, of yeah. an opening crawl which explains the concept of replicants yes. and the what happened in the past. Mm. Uh, I did prior to this. I did watch the three shorts that are on YouTube. Right? Yeah. Apparently, it's pronounced Dennis Villeneuve. Yes, I've heard that. Also, I'm going to call it Dennis. Vill- I'm still going to call him Villeneuve. I'm going to call him Denny Villy. Denny Villy. That sounds good. <laughs> nice. Uh, but anyway, there's three shorts on yes. YouTube uh, that are set in between the first Blade Runner and the second Blade Runner. Yep. Two are live action, one's animated. Yep. Maybe give those a whirl. Yeah, they're good. And yeah. they set up this They set up this world. Not required viewing, but in total it'll take you 25 minutes to watch them all. Yeah. yeah. They do have... They, it does have the issue that they did again with Alien Covenant. Right. Where they, you build up a rapport with a particular character prior to going into the movie. Yes. And then you see this character and it would be more... I would say you'd be more invested in this character if they'd put that in the movie yeah, as opposed to... Hey... Did you did you watch the supplementary material? Oh, you didn't. Okay, well, this is just the guy then. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think Alien Covenant is worse for that. Oh, sure, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, there's a little. bit I of apologize that to for this. trying to compare Alien Covenant and this movie. That's Mason. It's okay. They're both science fiction. They both have aliens. That's true. <gasps> is Whoa. that a spoiler? It doesn't have aliens. That's what I was going to say. It doesn't <laughs> have aliens. You're like, oh, I missed a whole subplot there. Now, Mason, this is a somewhat of a disappointing box office weekend. I heard, and You yeah. know what? I should have given you the numbers and see that got you to figure it out. Because yep. I know you know nothing or care little for box office numbers. I saw the numbers does and anybody, I already knew. Yeah. Does anybody no. care about this so when I do box office numbers? I feel some people must. We only talk about it briefly. Mm. And I rarely stop to explain it at length. So uh-huh. we normally just breeze past this section. Give it a Why it a bash. are we still on it? You know yeah, I know, mean? right? Let's We're talking it. about it. Let's get into it. Let's uh, it's reckoned it's going to have a 42 million US weekend on the back of the budge- budget of between 150 and 185 million plus marketing, et cetera, et cetera. That seems very low. Is, if you're going to make a two hour and 45 minute Blade Runner sequel to a movie from 35 years ago, which bombed at the time, that's very divisive in terms of fan base. Like it's built up a core fan base. That's true. But anybody who doesn't know anything about Blade Runner is probably not going to see this. But it's got the goose, it's Ryan got the goose. Gosling, and it's got, it's got Harrison, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, yeah. It's got Jared Leto. It's got some... Uh, Fun visuals, I, it's got yeah, some very I exciting agree. visuals. But the other thing is, when your movie's nearly three hours, it's got l- big naked ladies. It's got big naked ladies. It's got the too big na- in my opinion. Yeah, it's got the bare naked it's got ladies. The bare naked ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's the ca- Ryan Gosling's like, oh man, it's such a tough. <laughs> God, it's it's such a tough life in 2049, Los Angeles. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I'm glad they cloned the bare naked ladies. <laughs> in every in every bar in every dive bar in the city you can go watch the bare naked ladies. <laughs> so 
And also, because it's nearly three hours long, that means you can you've got less session times. That's true. So look, I'm not surprised. This this will eventually make its money back. They're going to do steel books and digital releases, and they'll probably do another slightly altered cut. Though apparently, Denny Villey says. It's not the case, and this is definitive. Right, okay. It feels definitive. Yeah. It doesn't feel like there's anything missing or that you'd need to add. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Mason, what did you think the story was oh, without spoiling everything? <laughs> All right, I can do this. Okay, here we go. Ryan Gosling. The goose. He's K. Yeah. He's a cool He's dude. He's okay. He's okay. And yeah. he, he's a guy, and his job is to retire replicants. Yes. Who are human-seeming robots. Yep. That are going rogue. Correct. By doing things like trying to live their lives. <laughs> but he goes to him and he kills him. It's like the... Yeah, so he's, he's essentially the Harrison Ford character. Yeah. From the first one, yeah. But then he uncovers a mystery. Oh, no. And what's he going to do? Solve the mystery Blade and cry run. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he'll team up with Harrison Ford. They'll certainly... Meet in a very orange place, like <laughs> if they do in the trailer. No spoilers, it's in the trailer. They'll point some guns at each other or something. Correct. Yeah. Jared Leto's in it too. And a lady with a very severe fringe. <laughs> do you want to talk about them first? What? This Jared Leto and the severe fringe. Oh, lady? yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... I don't hate his performance. I think it's fine. Like, I think you... It's, 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 I think is it a you bias? Just, it's, it's a I bus- think it's a bias. I think you hate him in everything now. No, I don't think that's true because I've seen him in stuff that I really like. Like he's got his Fight Club but he gets his face punched in. Oh, yeah, that's but true. But I, don't, don't, I, can, I can see his acting. Like, uh, Dave, and you can't see Dave Harrison Batista? Ford's acting. No, Harrison not the Ford's same acting. way. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean... Yeah, I mean, Harrison Ford does some like some goofball faces or whatever, but also Harrison Ford's like 110 years old. It's true. Like Jared Leto, he comes in, he does his like sinister voice or whatever, and he creeps about. And like uh-huh. I, I can hear him doing a voice right, okay. as well. Like Harrison Ford isn't doing a voice. You know, no one else is doing a voice. But I don't know what... I don't know what Jared Leto's voice is, like his real voice. Okay. I assume it sounds a lot like that, if I'm honest with you, like a okay. creep. Well, you and Ben Vanell from Filthy Casuals are on the same page then. Yeah. You're both against me. Why don't you start your own podcast? You can call it the Lido Love Letter. Sounds really good. Sons of we'll wear kimonos as we record it. <laughs> be great. <laughs> but I thought his henchman was more effective as a villain. Love is her name. Yeah. And the other thing about it, I, I found that Jared Leto's... Anyway, i got to get into spoilers. I can't, I'll hold no, back no, we on. can do this. No, I'll hold back on it. I just don't think there was, there was, there was a fulfilling character arc for that particular character. Well, he's... N- Barely in it, yeah. So if you're a, if you're Jared Leto's biggest fan, nah. if you're if you're going to the cinema listening to the right thirty seconds Leto's to Mars dis- discography, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Then look, we'll talk about it. Mm. But uh, yeah, he's barely in this. Yeah. That being said, everybody else is really good. I think yeah, everybody's good, good performance. Da- again, fantastic. David Batista's good in David this. David Batista's fantastic. He's mm. really might be his best performance. Yeah. Um. Oh, hang on. Greg's just calling me. Okay. For everybody at home, Greg is what I call my wife. It's not weird. Greg, what's up? Yeah, no, I, I gave it to him. It's all good. Uh, next Saturday, I think. Oh, great. All right, Mason and I are recording, so can I call you back? I'll speak to you later. Okay, love you. Bye, Greg. That was my wife, Greg. <laughs> he loves his wife. <laughs> <laughs> what a lame wad. Come on, man. Nah. Uh, Claire says, uh, also, thank you to all the people who... We mentioned it briefly last week. She fell over running and knocked a lot of her teeth out. <laughs> she sure did. Uh... Which are now, it's looking much better. It's looking pretty yeah, bloody pretty. you barely notice. Yeah, but uh, she's, um, yeah, it's only temporary, but she's getting fixed again. Uh, she actually did an episode on it uh, of her podcast, Just Make the Thing, which I'll wow. link below. You can bloody check it wow. out. It's a real Kanye West moment for her. In what sense? He broke his jaw. Did he? He was a, uh, not recently, this is years ago. I was going to make a lewd reference to a self-act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, potentially. No, because he, because you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a rapper. Is he? Yeah, well... I'm also a rapper. You're not. It's You, you can't rap or dab, all right? Oh, Steady come on, on, mate. But he started out as a, as a hip-hop producer. Yes. And it was in an era where you couldn't be a hip-hop producer and be an, a, like a rapper. You couldn't cross over. Right. But he was like, no, I want to be one. And then he broke his jaw in a car accident. Mm. And then he recorded a song called Through the Wire, where he raps with a broken jaw. Ah. Yeah. This was obviously a long time ago. This was a long time it's ago. It's not really a relevant story then, is it? Oh, what? I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, it's a different It's a different injury and it happened in a different era. That's true. And to <laughs> different people now <laughs> that I think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's doing well. Thank you for all the, the nice messages. Uh, yeah, Gosling's great, uh, mm-hmm. obviously. He's, 
There's a lot of nuance to his performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of crying. A lot of crying. Oh, not as much. Yeah. Oh, there's, there is some. There's some say, crying. Yeah. He definitely he becomes more emotionally affected as the kind of the movie progresses That's as true. the story kind of unfolds. And mm. I think he handles that really, really well. Ford's Harrison Ford. I think he's good. I think he I think he there's a scene where he that he has with Jared Leto and it their acting styles are very <laughs> It's very evident that it's they're from different, different schools. Yeah, different eras acting. and different schools. Yeah. That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Robin Wright Penn is... Uh, great the, in it. Great, really She's good. She's the chief. She's the chief. Uh, Joy, who's uh, Ryan Gosling, the goose's wife or companion, mm-hmm. uh, is fantastic also. Uh, and I think that's all, of the, all the main players. There's a few other bits and pieces that's that kind true. of pop up. But yep. I would say, look... It may, it's probably a personal bias thing, the uh-huh. Jared Leto thing, because I only see Jared Leto like I only see Johnny Depp. So uh-huh. I, I could be wrong on that. You, you, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But all in all, fantastic performances. It's it's a kind of a slow burn, isn't it? Boy, it's a slow burn. If you burn. want wham, bam, thank you, Blade Runner, this is not for you, <laughs> oh. Mason. It, tonally, it's very similar to the first one. Yeah, right. In that it is a bit of a meander. Yes. But I mean, it's I two hours and 45 minutes, so it's definitely a meander. I feel it's more like... The first one's more meandering. It's just kind of things kind of sort of loosely happen to Harrison yeah. Ford and he kind of fumbles about. This one is ve- it's more detecting and going from A to B to C. Like it feels like Ryan, Ryan Gosling is the driving force of the movie as opposed to things just kind of happen to But at the same t- I feel at the same time, it's the plot is very convenient. Yes. It's a, a, ver- yeah. it's a very... We'll have to talk about it in spoilers, yeah. I feel, but the... the the plot has a lot of contrivances yes. or one massive contrivance. In particular, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which well, felt we'll ho- quite unnatural to me, but... We'll hold off, Mason, if all you right, don't mind. All right. If you don't, if you don't bloody mind. It's an incredible looking film, right? Looks real good. Like one of the most amazing films that's ever been filmed. One of the most amazing Blade Runner films. Yes. Soldier, one of the, one of the two. Runner. Yeah, that's true. Of the, of the three. <laughs> yeah. Of the three big ones, certainly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably the best looking one. Yeah, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, you can see like the budget obviously went on a lot of real sets, real locations, uh-huh. throwing dust on everybody. Yeah. You know. And that being said, had, given that we did watch it the original last week, yeah. that one still holds up. Yeah, it, it still looks, looks really yeah, it looks good. Great. looks really yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, in this one, we didn't get any umbrellas with like fluorescent light sticks in yeah, them. Yeah, what was that? Mm. What kind of joke is that? What yeah. are they doing? Don't know. Is this supposed to be a sequel or a prequel? What is interesting, though, is that we did. We're still in that weird parallel universe yeah. where nobody has a mobile phone, which I love. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a big point of this story is I was going to talk. Well, this is in a, the sh- one of the shorts beforehand. The reason that society is the way it is. So I guess this is a minor spoiler for the shorts. That if you uh-huh. haven't watched the shorts, but again, if you don't want to know anything, you shouldn't be listening to this. Mm. Um, there was a blackout in 2022 yes. caused by some uh, some replicants in mm-hmm. order to wipe their files clean. Yes. So the reason that replicants, the original, some of the older model replicants are still being hunted, the Nexus 8s, yep. is because those files are gone and they've all reverted back to analog files. In paper Which I stuff. thought was really, yeah. really interesting. And yeah. but, well, when you say a blackout... Not yeah. like a little blackout no. where you're in your house and you're like, oh, this is inconvenient for the 20 minutes it's going to last. It was an like, EMP like, and everything like fell Like a worldwide catastrophe, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really interesting. So there's fragments of stuff that was from that was from back then, yeah. but a lot of it is now physical files in little drawers and things mm, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I like that, that the world went, you know what, we're not going to go digital anymore, we're going to go We're going to go backwards. I thought that was a, a nice little wrinkle, Mason. Mm. Action sequences... Light on action, would you say? Yes. Yeah. Let me think. Bits and bobs. There's bobs and bibs. There's bibs and bobs and bibs. That's yeah. true. Uh, what we did get was pretty effective, though, I think. Right. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Pretty visceral. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there a moment like the Harrison Ford finger break scene from the first one? Yes. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, there is a scene set in a forensics lab, which is, I feel, quite Oh, quite yeah, like that. right. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. yeah that's pretty, pretty brutal. I remember that. You know what? You, what I wasn't really impressed. I was speaking to Resdolf Matt, who does some editing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, very super nice guy. He was saying the music in this wasn't great. And thinking back on it, I didn't think it was either. It was. I think it's Hans Zimmer. I might be wrong. It is Hans Zimmer. Yeah. But it's there's kind of shades of the original. But it, yeah, it, it's a lot of throat singing. A lot of like, there's a lot of that. Yeah, there is too. And yeah, I don't know. I feel I felt that kind of. I don't know, maybe, maybe it was kind of an interesting... Because it was more sinister, which I feel is def- more... Yeah. Well, the more, first one's more optimistic. You mentioned yeah. this last week, and biddly do. Yeah, and it, but it, what I also found was interesting, in the animated short, yes. which is set in 2022, which mm. is only three years after the original, right. that is very... 
That's very Vangelis. Oh, okay, yeah. and that was by uh, uh, somebody I'm a fan of, Flying Lotus, who's like an electronics producer who re- who like did a dead on impression of like Vangelis. The car? Yes, like the car. Do you think they didn't go electronic? The Vangelis, yeah. <laughs> the Ford Vangelis. Do you think it does? The Harrison Ford Vangelis. <laughs> do you think it doesn't? Do you think they didn't go electronic because maybe it doesn't hold up as well? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And maybe because they've returned to this analog era in a way, maybe that's got something to do with it as well. No. So hence the oh, maybe. Singing. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think of. <laughs> that's just James, by the way. <laughs> he can do two voices at the same time. Correct. And I can rap also. I can do two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I I think one. In a lot of ways, this movie is better than the first, but that's also got to do with the like the era it was made. Yeah. I think this movie did a better job of tackling what it means to be human and what it means to be a replicant. And if you've got the, if you've essentially functioned like a human being and you have those emotions and memories yeah. then essentially what, what difference is there? I think this movie did a better job of that because we well, can't really, it would have been hard to do that in the first one because this built off the complexity of the first. Yeah, so right. I think it took it in places, which I didn't expect, which it, I think it improved on the universe and, and yeah, fleshed yeah. it out more as opposed to kind of doing a rehash or doing something bad if that makes yeah. sense i think it was a, i think it was a the way they went to explore those things was was really intriguing i found i agree yeah do you think it felt like it was addressing uh like issues in society now not as much did you get a sense no but i read an article this week about the original blade runner and something that never even occurred to me that bl- the original blade runner is very seems very appropriate to now because it's about when you think about the the first one, mm. Deckard goes out and he just there there are people there are people who are the the replicants in the original are for the most part completely indistinguishable from from people yeah except somebody's decided they're not people mm. and they're submitted to these tests that are completely incomprehensible <laughs> right. and they're like. You you get tested for emotional reactions yes. and responses, but you have to have exactly the right ones. It, like it's not like the replicants oh, are right, like yeah. robots and they're like, I do not understand, whatever. Yeah. They're still upset when they flip the tortoise or yeah. whatever. But it's not the right yeah, one. Because they don't have the memories to lean on. Yeah, they but it's like this yeah. this group of people who are like, We don't think you're human and mm. we're gonna get rid of you. That's just really cause. interesting. I didn't think I of that. Know, so right. in thirty years. And people are like, Yeah, this isn't that sim- dissimilar from right no, now, absolutely. where people are like, you know, I don't, I don't. Get out of our bloody country. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what you think is what I'm saying. No, no wrong. <laughs> no. Anyway. That's really interesting. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't but again, I think that that, that movie had a lot more ambiguity, ambiguity and I think this one was just like, no, right, here's, yeah. here's some answers. Here's a whole pile of answers. You want answers? Yeah. Here's some answers. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that that, that is... That is part and parcel of it being more of a detective movie. P and P, yeah. You have to give people some answers, otherwise they're going to be But also no answers. Also no answers. In some ways. Should mm. we move on to spoilers? Let's move on to spoilers. You know what? I'm going to say best movie ever. Me I too. had some issues with it. Me too. Which I think we will discuss but in spoilers. I really, really enjoyed it. Mm. Like this is this is right up my alley, this kind of thing. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It, I didn't find it really... There was a few scenes that I thought this could probably be cut down a bit. Yeah, yeah. The bit with the, the wooden horse, that's not really a spoiler. Sure, right. I'm like, this is... I mean, we know what it is. Can we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speed mm-hmm. that along. But in general, and I'll talk about some of the issues that I have with it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this, mm-hmm. and I think um I might see it again. It's, it's a big undertaking to go and see it again, so maybe I'll oh, wait absolutely, to, yeah. to watch it digitally. But it's definitely worth seeing on on a big screen, isn't it, Mason? Yes. And I went with my brother as well, the one that you didn't like, uh, don't what? like, mm. continue to not like, continue to not like. Thank you. And he don't he, imp- don't imply in the <laughs> canon that I've somehow reconciled with your brother that I don't like. I have not. I would never. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, just before we go into spoilers, I made an Easter egg video for this which talks about all the different models of uh, replicants and oh, what yep. happened in between. And, cool. And uh, try to answer some of the, the questions of the movie as in like mm-hmm. uh, what's going on with Deckard and, and yeah, all right. that kind of thing. So, But that's spoilers as you well. You definitively answer whether or not he is a replicant. Correct. Mm-hmm. Spoilers. We, we don't know. If, don't, we don't, <laughs> know. don't know if he's a replicant. <laughs> we don't know. We still don't know. I like that. I though. guess there's an implication that because we went from Nexus Six to Nexus Eight, that he's a that seven. he's a seven. Even Rachel a seven, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, I mean, they're you know. I think the point of this movie is though it doesn't matter. Mm. And the other thing is, I he, mean, they're Hollywood tens. Yeah, that's right. that's true. <laughs> it doesn't matter, and he doesn't care. Yeah, like right. There's a bit where Jared Leto pushes him to be like, have you ever considered that you're just you you you're also because of this and this and this and yeah. this? And he's like, I don't care. Yeah. 
get fucked, yeah, basically. Right? Yeah. It's true, yeah. But I think that's also... Because he kind of came to that understanding at the end of the first movie. Like, he yeah. came to realise that replicants are essentially... They're, if they're indistinguish, indistinguishable from people, yep. except they can punch So do you a like wall. the idea that at the end of the first Blade Runner, we're like, who knows where they're going to end up? What's, yeah. what's life about, you know? What's yeah. it all about? But in this, they're like, yeah, they had a kid and they're off. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. I, do, I like the idea that... Well, what I liked most about it was the, as opposed to just being like, there's more replicants and we still don't like them. Yeah. It added the wrinkle of if these, if these robots can produce a baby, yep. can have, can have children, mm-hmm. then that's a different, like they're not just robots then. You can't, you can't ignore that. That's true. Yeah. yeah so I found that ele- element of it really interesting. Mm. Uh, you did not? Well, that, I guess so. But also, you yeah, know, I think you're probably right. And I guess the idea being that the, the secret to doing that is, is only in, Rachel or the kid. Right. But that's the thing, like, surely if Deckard is a replicant mm. and he is the seven, yeah. then couldn't Nyanda Wallace just pull him apart and get the... Well, he was probably going to. He was oh, taking right, him okay. off world that's to, true, that's true. to do that yeah. very thing. Anyway, here's the thing that I disliked about this movie yeah. is that the whole thing was based around Gosling. Oh, right. yeah, we should say, in spoilers, Gosling's a replicant as well. Straight up. Yeah. They tell you almost Im- immediately, yeah. Because at the start, he fights Dave Batista, and Dave Batista slams his head in the wall about eight times. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. That's monster strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if he died straight first, up? First yeah. scene, yeah. And the rest was in flashback or something? That'd be fun. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we reveal that he's he feels no pain and he's basically. He's a. He's a I think he feels pain to okay, an extent. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah. Is he a nine? He's Am a I- nine, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So Batista's an eight. But he's a Hollywood 11, he's a Hollywood 11. if you ask me. <laughs> but Batista's, Batista's an eight. And as we saw in the short film in between, Leto made the nines, uh, Hollywood 11s, yep. because, because they're supposed to be more compliant. Yeah, And right. that's the reason they're now able to basically make a replicant that hunts other But that's replicants. interesting because in the, in the short that has Jared Leto in it, yeah. he commands one of his replicants to kill himself, and he yeah. does. Yes. But he can't do that with Leto, with, with, with Kay for some reason. Well, I guess he's not also in charge of him. Oh, I see. Like right, he right. answers to the... The chief. The, the Blade Runner cops right, okay. or whatever, the chief. Yeah. yeah, okay, sure. I found that really interesting that she kind of... The, the chief, Robin Wright, really struggled to, dis, to determine... To separate him from being a man or a machine. Yeah, right. Like there's a. I mean, she wanted to bone him, yeah, obviously. And, and it's also implied that maybe she already has at some point. Oh, right, yeah. Is that, is that, did you get that feeling? Yeah, kind of, yeah. And she even mentions, like, I forget that you're a machine sometimes. But yet you see there's other moments where a cop walks past him yeah. and, like, yells in his face, skin job or something like that. Yeah, right. Which is, you know, like the slur in this universe. Mm-hmm. And he flinches because presumably he's programmed not to hit cops. Yeah, and right. Because there's another bit in the movie where he gets attacked in a junkyard and he full on picks a guy up and breaks him over his knee like yeah, Bane, yeah. throws him aside and then shoots like four guys. Yeah. I loved the action sequence. With just, that was just good, when yeah. So like precise and brutal. Yeah, right. I, I thought that they were really well done. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the thing that I didn't like is that the plot revolved around entirely around K. Yeah. In the sense that he he found the, the replicants and then it turned out that Rachel was in the box underneath the farm yes, and then right. it turned out that, that he maybe had the he memories was, and, he had the memories yeah. and maybe he, he was the kid but then like yeah we I, th- I found it weird weird and convenient yeah sure that's but I guess untrue. potentially I mean someone could have anybody could have found it I guess and okay, it just yeah happened and to, put, yeah. yeah and I guess potentially some other blade runners have come across you know uh what's his name Sapper Morton and have yeah. been killed by him or what have you yeah right you don't yeah. Know. that's so, right I, but I guess given that he was a central part of the story and he was... Yeah, well, that's who the, it's not about a guy who doesn't go on an adventure. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I like that element of my brother, the one you don't like, actually mm-hmm. called it before where he's like, something about what if he turns out to be Harrison Ford's son? I'm like, that'll be stupid. They won't do that. Uh-huh. And then they went in that direction. But it happened on it happened so early that I thought, I think this is going to twist back. Yeah. Where, it's just gonna, where he's not... Because I liked... Because basically by the end of the movie, if you're still listening and you... I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's revealed that he's not Harrison Ford's son, but he has the memory, some of the memories of Harrison Ford's real daughter. Yes. And that's why he's able to solve certain things in this mission. And yeah, so he right. thinks that he it comes to the point where he thinks that maybe he might be human or partially I human. I guess maybe there are others. I guess potentially there are other series nine replicants that also have her they memories. They have that same memory. So maybe exactly, any yeah. replicant who came upon this would have figured it out the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like maybe it's just a coincidence that it was him. Yeah. 
Because that, and he was just the first one on the scene. One of the replicants even says to him, you're not the first one to think. We all want it to be us, this human replicant Yeah, okay, you know what? Baby. You're right. Yeah. You've, I retract that earlier complaint because I guess whichever replicant went there would have sent up the drone from the thing, would have found the box, right, yeah. would have whatever, and like maybe it's 50-50, yeah. they have the dream with the Yeah, the all horse. the nines might have it, the, might yeah, have that true, particular yeah. dream. Yeah. But the, the, what I really like that about as well, first of all, I like that... He was just a guy. I yep. love. I think that's my favorite thing in a character is just a guy, just he's an everyman, just yeah, he's like not us. Special, you know what I mean? He like, puts on his robot <laughs> pants one leg at a time, or maybe he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably jump into them. Mm-hmm, yeah, but he um, uh, but by the end, so he wasn't special. Like he 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 was chosen for this, and he had some, the skills to kind of. Yep. He was chosen in a way, but at the same time, it's, there was more to it than that because essentially he was Harrison Ford's son because he had the memories of the yep. kid. Mm-hmm. So in a way, he was That's at the true. same time, which I thought was really interesting. And so he had a connection to that character, yes. even though they weren't actually related. They weren't actually yeah. related, yeah. yeah. I mean, because Harrison, because he had a, as much as connection to Harrison Ford as his actual daughter did, seeing as he spent zero time with her. It's true, anyway, yeah. So. Just put her in a bubble for put thirty years. Put her in a bubble for thirty years, yeah. Mm. I th- actually I like that the daughter character a lot. I didn't pick that it was going to be her. Like that didn't occur no, to me at no. all that uh, that, mm. it, that it was going to be her. But uh, you also when when she came back at the end, although she was a good actor, so I guess she you was like a good actor. Yeah. She did some good acting. Yeah, yeah. She seemed very nice, so I guess that. Makes... Do you think she was putting out her own memories in the world on purpose so somebody oh, could find her? Or... Maybe. Do you think there was too much sequel bait in this movie? Because there was the woman who's like, yeah. I've got thousands of replicants and I can. we're, yeah. we're going to start a war. Where are they? Uh, somewhere else? When are you going to start that war? Oh, uh, later? We'll get around to it. We'll get around to it eventually. Yeah, I think there is, but I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon, especially with these numbers. Also, I'd be happy to wait. 10, 15, 20 All right, years, okay. you know what I mean? Sure, right. Like we don't need we don't need a rep we don't need a blade runner franchise, really. That's I mean, true. That it's, do you want to see a sequel? Uh, I re- that's the thing though. I really like the world. Yeah, right. So I wouldn't mind revisiting it, but I they they pulled this off and I'm not sure if I want <laughs> They'll it. They'll never do it again, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh there what was else a, was good, yeah. There was a CGI Rachel in this. Awful. Yeah, not good, was that's it? That's the worst one of those I've ever seen. No, the worst one was from Kingsman. What happened in that one? Young Colin Firth. Oh, I can't even remember that. It was incredibly bad. Was that you re- this? Who you reckon it was that? Yeah, the recent Kingsman. Ah, uh, no, this was worse than that. I don't think so. Ah. Uh, uh, you know what? You know what made it particularly? It was so yeah, it was plasticky. Un- it was unnerving also because just prior to that, they showed actual footage of her. Yeah, right. So you had that kind of frame of reference. Which- I think they just shouldn't have shown her face. Yeah, I agree. Or got an actor that looks kind of like her. Good enough. Yeah, and going good enough. Yeah, but I could see why they did it. I think it's a little bit better than because the, they hate us. Yeah, they hate us. I think it's a little bit better than the Princess Leia stuff and the Tarkin stuff. Yeah, but it was it was still very unpleasant to look at. And the, when that she talks, it's 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 very odd. You know what I did like the idea of Ryan Gosling's girlfriend Joy is yep. a is a holographic woman, correct? Who's tethered to his house. Yep, and she makes him feel special and and all those kind of things and looks after him and they he, he really loves her it seems yes. she gets and then she gets destroyed at one point yep and then he comes across the an adver- an advertisement for her a giant yeah, right. bare naked lady mm-hmm. and and then she calls him joe which is what also what the home version of her called him cuz she's like you should have a real name if you're a real boy right right which basically means there's not that much depth to that character you know what I mean? It's just a program to make you feel special. Oh, okay, to, right. That you that kind of encourages you to upgrade them, which means you give more money right, to the company right. so you can have the portable version. I assumed she was networked. Oh, and okay. the ad calls him Joe because oh. she called him Joe. But I don't think I don't think anything's networked. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. That's that's how I I just yeah. think yeah, I, so... What did you think of the idea that in purchasing an emitter for her, she became an exposition machine? So they could then have <laughs> conversations. Because otherwise he's just walking around. Like, yeah. I, th- I think maybe they were like, okay, the original Blade Runner was very confusing for a lot of people. Yeah. We need to have some sort of device to explain some of the more complicated elements. Right, right. But we can't have a Harrison Ford voiceover, a Ryan Gosling voiceover. They should have just had Harrison Ford's voiceover. Yeah, totally. That's Gosling did a monologue. What's this kid? What's this oh, kid about? Holograms. But I think they were I think they were like, okay, well, if we have her follow him around, she can be like, yeah. hey, what are we doing now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we going to the Badlands. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. No, but I, th- I thought that was... I know the way I interpreted it as like he was in love with her. And she's designed to respond in that particular yeah, way. Right. Uh-huh. But even then, like, because 
There's actually, it's a very clever sex scene where she merges with another replicant. Yeah, it clever, was, that's it was the word. It was weird, like, yeah. but I was like, I've never, I've genuinely never seen something like this before. But, um, and afterwards the replicant says, you know, I've seen inside your mind, there's really not much to you. Yeah, Which right. kind of, which to me, arguably turns out to be true. That's, I guess that's right, yeah. yeah. Mm. Am I incorrect, Mason? No, so you've, you've found a lot of layers in this movie. And you didn't find any? I found a couple of lines. Oh, good. Yeah. What else? We, what else do we want to talk about, Mason? Before uh, we bloody, uh, is that it? I don't know. Yeah. Look, I could talk about this again another time. I'm sure other things will will come up. Uh, oh yeah, the the action scene. Uh, I enjoyed the fact that uh, the uh, the henchwoman could just at one point just operates a drone and just blows up all of <laughs> Ryan Gosling's opponents. Yeah. You think it's going to be a long drawn out fight sequence or a negotiation or whatever? And she's just like, oh, I'll just blow them all up. And he's just like, all right. And he just yeah. carries on. Yeah. yeah. You know what was also good about his performance? It starts very kind of robotic and uh-huh. drive-like and you see him develop emotions yeah, right. as the movie progresses. Do you think he's dead at the end? He seems dead. Uh, There's a few parallels to Drive. but Because yeah. mm-hmm. the dri- remember at the end of Drive when he's lying he down. Might he, dead, he might yeah, be dead, yeah, but then he's not dead. He's not right? dead. Do you think he was dead in this? I think he's not dead. He got one of those wounds where it's bad, but it's not so bad that you can't go somewhere before you die. Yeah, and if you recall in the in, you know in the first sequence, he's stabbed through the arm and he just glues it back together. Yeah, so it, I reckon he's quite resilient. I think yeah. he's fine. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Or he's dead. No, I think he's fine. Yeah, okay, fair yeah, enough. Nice. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good, right? Uh, you know what I thought was quite a strange bit where you see they're fighting in, in, a, in a spinner that's drowning. Yep. Going under cars don't drown. You know what I mean? No, I get it. And Gosling's maybe in the future cars do drown though. <laughs> they're like, blah, 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 help me, Kay. Blah, 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 blah. I'm your loyal car. Blah, 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 blah. Gosling's fighting severe fringe. Yes. And you just see Harrison Ford's goofy head going uh, like just yeah, got to bump totally, it up and yeah. down in the water. Which is weird, but as a character, as a as a narrative choice, because you'd think if he wants to protect his daughter, yeah, why wouldn't he just drown himself? Well, but, oh yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, mm. he could have. Maybe it's because he believes in Kay. Yeah, well, something. that's true. Maybe drown him, drown himself after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Do you think it was weird how that woman was? Maybe like- he wanted to kill himself in front of his daughter. <laughs> but that's what happens after the cameras are switched off. Did you find it weird how she was like, "I'm the best"? It's like, settle down. We're all, uh, we're all pretty good. Nah, it's good. It's <laughs> good idea. Yeah. She's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You know, actually, this sequence I really enjoyed. There's a bit where Harrison Ford and. Um, Gosling, the goose, mm-hmm. have a bit of a punch up and a bloody shootout in an, yep. in an Elvis uh, hol- uh, Vegas holographic show. Right, yeah. And the sound is cutting in and out, but it's really sparse. So it's not like it'll play for 30 seconds and then stop. It's just like, Arp! yeah, right. And then it's, and then it's, and then it's complete silence and it's, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I really like that. Is Harrison Ford's diet in Las Vegas just booze and bees? Booze and bees, baby. You know it. Yeah, I guess that's Vegas. <laughs> it's Vegas for you, baby. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's about it. You posted this on, I put this in my Easter egg video as well, but you posted this on Twitter. That's oh, yeah. That's encouraged by the Sydney dust storm. That yeah. Happened if, you, if you haven't seen it, just Google 2009 Sydney dust storm. And there's a great picture of Sydney's Luna Park <laughs> with its giant clown face. <laughs> like Luna Park's like a, like an amusement park. And it's got a big old clown face and it's just in this, it looks orange like it's in the this. desert. This, yeah. in this completely orange desert. It looks it's great. great. And it, it's exactly what they did. They copied yeah. it the same. Yeah. Okay, if we do a sequel, do you want to see them go off world, or do you uh, think it should be an Earth based? Because they're talking about Jared Leto's like we've got nine colonies, baby. Also, I didn't think that character kind of didn't go anywhere with him. It was just kind of he just didn't kind of get what he wanted, but we didn't see him again. Didn't get his eyes gouged out. That's true. Maybe that's the sequel. I liked his little drones. I thought they were fun. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, mm. he was like Jesus when he came on set, wasn't it? It was yeah, like they said. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, blinded himself, which is dumb. Because he's had drones that could let him see. That's true. I did like the fact that we didn't see what he could see. But the fact there were like 10 drones oh, right, means yeah. there's something weird happening in his head. Yeah, in real you life. Know? Yeah, Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the fact that they didn't show like he had 10 screens in his brain. Or yeah, whatever. right. Gotcha. Yeah. Clearly, he's getting some sort of weird input in his brain and we don't know what it is. I thought that was interesting. They look like floating poos. All right, steady on. Don't you think? No. You don't think? No, not really. Okay. I like the noise they made. Yeah. No. <laughs> they had an actual noise, which I like. Flush. Just out of toilet <laughs> flush noise. Yeah. So you do you want to see a sequel? I would like to see a sequel. And yeah, maybe off world. Sooner rather than later or later rather than sooner? Sooner rather than later. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. I'll make some calls if to my friend Barry. See if you would go to the screening with us when, when it happens. Okay, cool. 
It's nice right. to bring friends. Okay, if we could go me, you, Barry yep. in the seats. You not. don't want to sit next to Barry? No. Because I'm the linchpin between you guys. I Is guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Got some listener reviews, Mason. Hello. This is from Tom Murray. A lot of people also not impressed with this at all. Yeah, that's which, is, which I can understand because it's it's very long. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, it says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Pretty good movie. Felt the urge to shout Blade Runner. Runner. A lot though. <laughs> Giuseppe said, uh, Blade Runner 2049 was aggressively just a movie. Brackets looked really good. Then hair dye story, reminder, BT dubs. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll talk about the end. Uh, All right. <laughs> Ezra Alexander says, just saw Blade Runner 2049, a bit disappointed, not a lot of Deckard, and the story seemed a bit shite. Blind Leto, Leto equals poo emoji. Hello. Uh, and Chris says, Blade Runner 2049 was great, one of my favorite movies. Loved how instead of silence, they just had blaring horns. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I think that's everything, Mason. Cool. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, that'll do it. Good, excellent. Nice. Oh, it's nice to return to the world of Blade Runner, and if this podcast is still going in 30, 30 years, 30, years, 30, 30 years, plus we'll, years, we'll come back mm-hmm. and we'll re Blade Runner. Nice. God, we'll be so old, Mason. Mm-hmm. One of us will definitely be dead. No. Nah. Hopefully it's you. Oh, what? No. Nah. <laughs> no, I think the opposite. <laughs> if we're going to have to. Decide which one of us wants to be dead. Nah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, it's what we're reading, what we're going to read. That's our famous segment. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> that theme song's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, I love it. You never hear it. Oh, no, I don't. That's true. I don't hear it. <laughs> what have you been reading or watching? Uh, there's a Netflix. Uh, Stephen King movie called Gerald's Game. Okay. It's really great. There you go. It's got Carla... Delevingne? No, the one from Watchmen. Cugino. And, yeah. Cugino. Yeah, and Sin City. Yeah, nice. No, okay. Uh, it's basically... That's more you probably want to know. Uh, I really liked It. I'd like to know slightly more. Okay, sure. It's no, um, I don't want to hear anymore. It's a horror thriller. Okay, is it made for Netflix? Yes, but it's really... Okay. It's, Next level stuff. Netflix is really trying to... They're really on some sort of scattergun approach, in my opinion, Well, they're right losing now. Marvel and Star Wars and everything, so they're just doing everything, aren't because, they? Because, like, initially it was like, okay, we're just doing, going to do premium stuff. Guess what, guys? We're bringing back Arrested Development. Guess what? You know, here's some... It's great. Now it's just... It, could, it can be anything. Yeah, it can be a just, Stephen King property. It can be a weird, like... Ashton Kutcher, the farm. The farm. It can be some... <laughs> some I'm, I'm flicking through the other day. It's, it's just weird knockoffs of other shows. Yeah, now. right. Yeah, like, yeah, a lot of stand-up comedy that I get recommended that I would never watch. Oh, really? But then stuff of- that no, but it's like you like country and western stand-up comedy. That's true. I do not. Mm. Absolutely do not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Uh, I'd say if you liked it and you're looking for another great Stephen King adaptation, mm-hmm. Running Man, Running Man, obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, that's a good one. The Langoliers. Mm. Have you watched The Mist, the TV series? No, I heard it's fine. Yeah, have I've also it? heard it fine. Yeah, I'm against th- that whole thing. <laughs> okay, no, good. I don't want to think about it. But Sometimes I just find myself thinking about the ending of the movie. Yeah, right. Don't like it. Is that why you don't want to have kids? Because I invariably have to shoot them. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, yeah. But but no, also, if you didn't think it was scary enough, yeah. this has got some oh, really. Pretty... Is this based on a Stephen King novel? Yes, apparently I... it's not a very good novel. It's oh, one of okay. his okay novels, at Fair least. Enough. At least, yeah. <laughs> okay. The other thing I'm doing, I'm playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 Beta. Oh, yeah, I saw uh, that. You saw a bit of that when you came in. It's it's a lot of fun. I'm bad at it. I, I watched <laughs> you play it like a, like a bored girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Just to sit there, we were like, hey, babe, check this out. <laughs> hey, yeah, we've got three kill streak. Yeah, look at me. But uh, no, I, I really like it as someone. I mean, actually, full disclosure, I'm, looks like I'm going to be doing some videos for it as well. Oh, yeah. Some promo stuff. There's a very slim chance, and if I say this, it's probably not going to happen now, that I might be going over to play it in a few weeks. Back, to America back specifically. To LA, yeah. Okay, wow. Uh, so that probably now won't happen now that I've said that. Nice. Which is all, normally the way. But, Shout um, outs to White Shack 94 <laughs> your nemesis on the game who was constantly killing Blitzed you. Blitzed me, basically. Every time. I got White Shack a few times. That's true. But he got so many slam dunks on or me. Or she. Or she. It was a female character. It was a character. female avatar, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. But no, look, it's... Look, I'm okay at the multiplayer. I've definitely gotten better, but uh-huh. I'm really looking forward to single player stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because the first one, the single player was non-existent, and there's the, the reason I didn't buy it was for for that alone. It was kind of like a quarter of a game. Yeah, By right. By all accounts, and from what I've seen, this looks like more than that. That's true. And if it's not, after I've done the paid stuff, 
or even that same week, I'll just tell everybody hmm. <laughs> the case. What are you watching or doing, Mason? Well, uh, first of all, I still have the last episode of Rick and Morty to go. Oh, I don't know why I'm just I'm hold, s- holding on to it. Yeah. A lot of people have said this. It's s- got an amazing death in it. Oh, and really? Not, maybe not somebody you'd know, but just an amazing... Uh, it's, you'll see it. All right, know cool. it when it happens. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people have been saying that this this season isn't as funny. Because of all the it, women writers, right? Isn't that what other people are Oh, boy. Saying? But it's more... It's, as interesting. I don't know if it's less funny, but it's certain. I didn't. I don't. It doesn't strike me as less funny, but it's certainly as interesting. I think fans are getting more and more fickle about Rick and uh, Morty. I see, it's right. a bigger. Like there was such yeah. a long. Well, wait. it is for very smart people. You uh, have to have at least a bachelor's You don't want to be a bloody yeah. Jerry about it. That's do you, true. Mason? You don't want to be a Jerry. You know, Andrew Levin's got into that. Uh, Facebook oh, that's right. For, exclusively for people who relate to Rick. Yeah, for like people who think they're super genius Ricks <laughs> and they're constantly being foiled by Jerry's or whatever it is. There, it's a it's a relationship where they're like, they're they they're su- the superior being, yeah. but they're always like, name a time when you when a woman was taken from you by a Jerry or whatever. <laughs> that's weird because because that's Rick's daughter. Yeah, well, the whole that... situation's weird. Anyway, he kept he kept like I'm trying to bring up some of his tweets. One he had, time yeah. he went, somebody put up a poll or something that it said, "Hey, do you think Rick's a vegan?" You know, because he's so above it, above it all or whatever. And Levens was like, "Yeah, sure, he's a vegan, just like all of us here." <laughs> oh wait, I meant virgin. That's pretty funny. That's some good work. Good work, Levens, if you're listening. And he got banned. Yeah, he got banned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. He kept trying. That was his goal. Yeah, he did. Band. He kept going. He did like ten or so before yeah, he got he's banned. Good. That guy's good. Yeah. Uh, listen to his podcast, Serious Issues. Yeah. Oh, hey, fam. And hey, fam. Um, yeah. But also, speaking of serious issues, comic book podcast. Yeah. Um, I read this week. Uh, you know, there's Dynamite Comics do that James Bond. Yeah, yeah. They do a Varga. They start. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of James Bond series. There's ones, but ones by Warren Ellis, and there's been some other ones. They're all great. Right. They're set in the book continuity, not in the movie continuity. Um, okay. But they're all they're all really good. Yeah, yeah. And I read recently that uh, the next guy to do it is a guy called. Hang on, I'll get his, get his, get his bloody name. Uh, Alice Cott. He's from from the Czech Republic. Oh. Um, he's going to do the next Bond series, and apparently, he, prior to this, he did a series called Zero. What's okay? Which yeah. It's like a, it's like so. I downloaded the first trade, mm. and I'm a couple of pages into it, and it's sort of like. Uh, it's a, it's like a super spy plus sci-fi series from okay. a couple of years ago, and it looks primo? real nice. It looks primo. So How many percento would you give it? Well, I'm very, I'm only a few pages in, but a hundred percento. So You're a far. real Jerry Mason. You should have oh, used no. all your analytical skills. Yeah, that's true. I should have been more analytical. Realistically, <laughs> I'm probably a Jerry. Oh yeah, we're all Jerrys, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we're either Jerrys or Mortys. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's like uh, super spy plus sci-fi. It's a little bit. It's pretty kind of pretty super violent, but not like it's not. It's not. It's not super violent for no reason. It's like it's super violent in the context of the world, and it's kind of like a guy who was raised to be a killer and sort of rediscovering his humanity, kind of thing. Okay, so interesting. Sure. So it's 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 and it's a different artist every issue, which is fun. But it's ah. the same. It's the same colorist, Jordi Belair, who also did Moon Knight and a whole bunch that, of other some, stuff. So. Sometimes that can be jarring, but this place it seems to work. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. I'm not losing track or anything, so that's, well, that's, good, that's pretty Mason. good. Anyway, that's a bloody having a good old time with that. So hopefully, I'll enjoy that. Hopefully Apparently, it'll be good. a lot of everybody. I, I was like, oh, should I get into this? And everybody's like, the ending's no good. It's great up until the ending. So I'm crossing my fingers, hoping to be destroyed by the ending. I don't know. Right. Well, at least going in, you know that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on. Yes, Greg. Sorry, James. Sorry, Mason. Hello, Mason. Hi, Claire. Hello. We already have. It's already been discussed. Oh, no. Have you also said about the promo code? Oh, have- shit. All right. I can edit, <laughs> I'll edit this in earlier. Okay. What's the promo code? So, it's 15% off. Right. Um, podcast dog is the code. <laughs> or one word? Or one word. Okay. All right. I'll edit this in earlier as well. So, this is going to okay. be a bit of a bloody time jump, Mason, if you a don't mind. Oh, are we putting this in? Yeah, but this will also stay in. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so, can people hear Claire? Yes. 15% off podcast dog. If you yeah, want if you want cheap want tickets. You want some cheap tickies. All right. Yeah. For some cheapos. Done it. Nice. Right. Cheapos. Okay. I think the dog wants to leave if you could oh. if you could take the dog. How's the whole face? How's the face, Claire? The face is, is getting better. Yeah, it looks great. For those who can't hear, Claire's face is getting better. <laughs> it is. It's getting better. Mainly my teeth now are the real issue. Oh, sure. Yeah. But other than that and the whisk, but I'll be all right. You can barely barely notice it. I yeah, notice. I oh wow. Vicky. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, she's great. Yeah, Did she you meet her at the podcast? Me. I was going to go to that, but then I didn't go to it. Well, because you were too busy making a podcast instead. That's true. How was that? It was great. Tell me afterwards. Yeah, how tell about me, you got, tell me how, how about about it just, was afterwards. Yeah, how about you have your private conversation later, eh? Maybe not. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. Okay, bye. Thanks, Greg. Okay, so I'm going to edit this in. Also, you can get a 15% discount if you use the promo code podcast dog. All one word, presumably, right? Yep. If it's not, I'll link it below. It'll it'll all be there. So even though the tickets are a little bit more expensive, 15% off is quite That's reasonable. Right. We'd rather sell out, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You mean like do as many advertising spots as possible? That's what I mean. Yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah, nice. I think we're past that. Yeah. Mason, good. Do the letters thing. I will. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a take away. Hang on to here right now. We're going to do letters. Are you wearing a retainer? What? No. I've just got excellent tea. I was eating this. Oh, I see. Right, right, right. Okay. I was chewing on this uh, memory card case. Okay. If you want to reach the show, you can obviously email Mason, obviously. If you have any questions like, James, are you wearing a retainer right now? <laughs> Correct. I've never had a retainer or a braces. I did actually have a thing, to, um, a mouth guard to stop me grinding my teeth when I was a younger man. And then I stopped wearing it. There you go. I should probably keep wearing it. No, it's too late know. now. It was for sleep. Who knows if you grind your teeth in your sleep? It's true. Do I? Ah, uh, there's no way I would know. Well, if you got off the bunk bed and just gave it a listen <laughs> so, every day. All right, okay, that's true, I will. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter to reach us on Twitter. WeeklyPlanetPod at gmail.com if you want to send us a letter. Correct. As Dara has done. Yeah, I know, I know Dara. There you go. Well, yeah. she has sent us a letter. Uh, she wants to know, she's from, uh, she's from Ireland. Mm. Apparently, uh, Johnny Depp. Uh, referred to a town in Ireland, uh, the town of Limerick in Ireland. Oh. He referred to it as Stab City. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have, have any context for well, this. What is, what? is he filming something in Stab City? I don't know. Is it Stab City? Um, look, I don't know. Could you look up Limerick and stabbings? Just see what happens. Anyway, uh, so uh, a polit- a, an Irish politician called Willie O'Day has taken offence to it and he's demanded that he apologises. Because if you recall, this is not the first time Johnny Depp has gotten into trouble with... Oh, he's a hot topic, isn't with, he? With, uh, he's with a real government. Jared Leto. Yeah, exactly. With, with, if you recall, uh, Johnny Depp and his then wife... Amber Heard? Amber Heard flew into Australia with their two dogs, Pistol and Boo. Yeah. And our Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce... Uh, was upset by that, yes, and said that they were un- the dog back they were undermining talking. Australia's uh, quarantine and biosecurity laws, um, and so they had to make a very very unenthusiastic uh, apology video, if you recall. I do. I don't think he meant that. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely not. But what I it, it, sp- Barnaby Joyce uh, news, yes, in recent Barnaby Joyce news. Oh, here we go. I mean, well, no, in political news in Australia. So it turns out you can't be a dual citizen. If you're in Australia, you're a dual citizen. You can't, uh, you can't hold a political office. It's no. against the rules for some reason. Correct. But like in Australia recently, one of our green, like our politicians in our Green Party, discovered that they were born in New Zealand and then immediately like moved to Australia. So technically, they were a, they were a dual citizen. They couldn't be a politician. They were like, listen, I've 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 learned this and I've got to step down. So sorry, guys. It's been it's been good, but you know. Yeah. And then another Greens politician discovered it as well. I guess she was, she was. Uh, what? All these foreigners sneaking into our country yeah. at birth. And then immediately, old mate Barnaby Joyce was like, "Well, well, 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 well. Look, if you can't, if you can't, if you bloody, you you wouldn't, you wouldn't drive without a driver's license, and then be like, oh, I didn't know. Ignorance is no excuse. If you can't sort out your bloody, your bloody domestic." Bloody citizenship issues, something as basic as that. You shouldn't have a political office. I'm glad. I'm bloody. I'm bloody glad they're gone. And a then, like, solid point from a man who knows what he's talking and about. And then two minutes later, it turns out he's also a dual citizen. And then he's like, "Well, I'm not stepping down." <laughs> what a dog! I hate that guy. I hate all our politicians. Everybody hates Barnaby. Yeah, same. Yeah. Who do you vote for, Mason? Uh, I mean, what do you do? I don't know. Just anyway, fuck with city. Anyway, yeah, oh, great stuff. Anyway, uh, uh, anyway, uh, Dara says. By the way, he's right. Limerick is stab. City. Oh, it is good because yeah, so. actually, well, there's the Limerick feud, which is uh, which is on the the top result for Limerick stabbings, which is between rival gangs. Uh, uh. Update from May twenty fourth. Uh, this is the next article. Man dies following stabbing in Limerick, Limerick City Centre. Wow. Uh, under that, in from August, man arrested after three stabbed in Limerick pub. Jesus. Under that, 1998, Limerick brackets, stab city no less, rebounds. That'll probably do it. That's from 1998. It says wow. Limerick stab city rebounds. Doesn't sound like they rebounded. Wow. Unless a re- rebound means 
just more stabbings. Great. Stab, Stab City sounds fantastic. We should wow. visit there. Mm. Australia's more glass city, isn't it? Glass as in you when you, you get, get hit in the head with a glass. A lot of people have asked us what being glass yeah. means. Apparently we mentioned a lot of Yeah, because well, when I was in Vegas, the guy was with got glassed as in hit in the head with a bottle Yeah, or mm-hmm. a glass. I guess you could call it being bottled. You could call it else. being bottled, yeah. yeah. Uh, I anyway, don't, yeah, that's a horrific injury. If you've ever seen Isn't that, uh, the aftermath of one of those. Dara says because she'd be the, the official friend of the show of the podcast. Absolutely, you, you may. definitely can. Mm. Official friend of the podcast from Stab City. Stab City. You better believe Stab, it. Stab Stab City. <laughs> oh yeah. What What do you got? I've got uh, a, a tweet from Liam Chattertron. Chattertron. Nice. <laughs> it's not his name, but he's is he the Chatterbot or the Chattertron? Chat, 2000? Yeah, Chattertron. Two thousand. That's right. Hasn't he? Mm-hmm. A uh, lot of recurring let- uh, names here. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. How do you think Soups will come back in Justice League? If Batman said he'd, he'll come, makes me think he's done a bit of grave robbing. What do you think? Do you Unless, think once again, that's not Superman. You, oh, you think it's Wonder Woman? What if it's Green Lantern, but he's wearing a cape? I don't think it's what if he's wearing the? I look. I uh, somebody pointed out. I think to me that maybe it's the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. Oh yeah, who w- wears a tremendously bad costume that is <laughs> green, purple, and red, and it's got a cape. It's one of my faves. Mm, it's I, bad. I one hundred percent think it's Superman. Oh, it's totally Superman. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. how do you think he's going to come back? Like he did in the Fortress of Solitude, where his his body was stolen from his grave by robots. By robots, and then whatever. He doesn't even have a Fortress of Solitude. It's lying in the middle of Metropolis. Oh, yeah, it is too, isn't it? If that even is his Fortress of Solitude. Well, maybe that's... I Potentially, they could do, like, that sinks into the earth. And they're like, where did it go? It's got whatever, and it's, you know... It yeah, it's off. Makes its way back to the Arctic or something. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. And it yeah. takes his body with it. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But I think... Or they could, it could just be just a recharge situation. Yeah, sure. Where he's just, you know, he's dead for a certain amount of time. Why'd they kill him in his second outing? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Why do we keep coming back to this? I'm, I'll be so happy when this franchise is gone. Ah, uh, Mason. God. No, this has been going since 1989. It's not going to stop now. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah. God. Yeah, I know. It, it, it didn't feel like And now he's unkillable. This. Yes, because... And they've already done Death of Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. In his second movie that's not a Superman film. Terrific. It's mostly a Batman film. Anyway, do you have any thoughts on what, how he's going to come back? Uh, I think they're going to still do black suit. I think they've been hiding it. There's been toys that allude to it, but you never know because toys don't necessarily mean anything. That's true. They've had Lex Luthor power suits from Batman, Superman, and a bunch of stuff. Maybe they've all been a ruse. Yeah. So that when he does come back, black suit. Good. Yeah, nice. I hope so. Yeah. Last tweet, Mason. This from oh, the- was that whole thing? Not not the mechanism by which he returns, but what is he going to be wearing when he, yeah. when he comes What's back? What's he going to be wearing? No, I said, how will, he, how will he come back was the question. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. The Chattertron 2000 is always brings up great conversation, mm-hmm. doesn't he? I agree. He's one of the best. He's built for it. This is from the Detective Marvel. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Do you think Star Wars will be the highest grossing of 2017? Because Civil War was actually the highest of 2016. Oh. That's interesting. Well, I don't know what the highest grossing film so far is. It's probably... Should we look it up? Is there a Fast and Furious film? I don't know. Highest. I don't think it will. I don't think it'll be as um, as big as the last one because you can't Force Awakens twice. You know what I mean? We hadn't. The people waited thirty years for a sequel to the Return of the Jedi. That's true. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, that was madness. Yeah. Here we it, go. The air was electric. The air was electric. On Mason. Force Awakens day. Yeah, not literal. Oh, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, nine hundred fifty million dollars. Despicable Me made a billion dollars. Of course it did. Apparently. Yeah. I don't know when they came out though. Despicable Me 3? Yes. I've I'm, I'm just went American box office. This is Transformers know. The Last Night, $1.2 billion. God fucking that damn That cannot be right. No, nah, it did do well. It just didn't do as well as the other wow. ones. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, look, if anything this year is going to do as well as that, it's yeah. got to be Star Wars, yeah. right? Because it's a movie people actually want to see as opposed to Transformers, which we're all begrudgingly going to. Bearing in mind, though, between now and then, we've got both Justice League and Thor Ragnarok. Yep. So... I think it's ve- it's very possible that one of those uh, does better. Maybe not Justice League because there's unless it's really good because uh-huh. of the kind of. I don't think Thor Ragnarok has the crossover appeal. No, I think you're probably right because they're looking at here. Guardians did 863 million. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it will probably do better than Guardians too. Really? But, okay. Uh, yeah, because I think people love the Hulk and it looks fun and funny. But and I think people love Thor. I, don't, I think people do love Thor. All right. I not. I think in his own solo movies, no, but I think in this environment, right? I think okay, sure, will sure, love sure, Thor. right? Okay, yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough. But look at even Spider Man. Spider Man didn't make a billion, so yeah. who knows? Who knows which way? So yeah, the top three were 
Beauty and the Beast, Fate and the Fate of the Furious. I was going to say, was there a Fast and Furious movie this year? Apparently there was. <laughs> uh, Despicable Me 3. Yes. So, yeah. Nice. Which I did not see. Remember when you said Beauty and the Beast wasn't going to make a billion dollars? Remember you said that? It says $950 million. You son of a... Not, not in here. Worldwide, one one point two. I said domestically. <laughs> you did not just say <laughs> Localized to this room. <laughs> I didn't buy a ticket. Well, I did. No, well, I didn't actually. <laughs> I that's didn't right. Yeah. <laughs> Domestic, localized to this room box office, <laughs> zero dollars. There you go. Mm-hmm. I think that's the show for this week, Mason. Why don't you bring us home? All right. If you want to bloody say hello to us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. Yes. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. I'll do it. You can go to our Amazon affiliate link, which is directly in the episode description. I'll do <laughs> it. Uh, what can you buy? What's fun that you could buy? Eggs. <laughs> in what context are eggs fun, James? You can eat them. You can throw them. That's not fun. Eggs. If you... <laughs> Look, all right. You... All right. Hang on. How are you preparing the eggs? I'm not. So I'm eating raw <laughs> eggs. Yes. Is that fun? <laughs> For me, to watch guess... you eat raw eggs. <laughs> All right, get some eggs, guys. If you buy some eggs on Amazon... <laughs> get someone to eat them. Yeah, get some... That is fun. <laughs> that is fun. Then send us a tweet of a unsuspecting friend being forced to eat raw eggs. Anyway, <laughs> but if you do that by clicking through our Amazon affiliate link, we're going to kick back somehow. You, you pay the same low prices for eggs. <laughs> you're going to make... And you get the unlimited entertainment value of forcing your friend to eat raw eggs. Coerce. We're going to kick back somehow. I don't yeah. know how that works. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, thank you to The Brute and Basilisk and Rackham for all our themes. Thank you to Raw Collings. He's the weekly planet. He is the weekly he's on, planet. He's on the Twitter. He's, he's, he knows everything about us. He's hot. Go to, is he? I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's gorgeous, obviously. Is he Hollywood 10? No, just definitely. But nice. he's also like, his, his content is hot and so His fire. content is hot fire. That's yeah. true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very dab. Keep going. So dab. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, if you want some teas, they're on Tea Public. You can get all kinds of teas. We have we had some people at uh, at the NYCC rocking the the weekly. Yeah, I saw teas. that. That was always cool, looks yeah. great, especially since we can't make it for the most part. Nah. But, uh it's always good to see people there rocking the teas. Yep. Doing a dab. Yep. If, so, if somebody could send us a dab, <laughs> a photo of them doing a dab while wearing a tea. It's got to be so dab, and we need to see that. That'd be so dab and fire. Yeah. We're we're so in touch with young people. <laughs> So good. Uh, what else? It's about it, I think. Theme thanks songs. for everybody. Thanks. Yeah, we did that. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks for everybody who listens to the show and tells yeah. a friend if you could. Uh, that's that, a, that's a, if you could tell one friend this week, that'd be great. That'd be great. That definitely helps us out. Uh, mm. Those live shows also. I mean, don't tell the person you've just forced to eat raw eggs. <laughs> no, obviously not. Because they will do precisely the opposite of. <laughs> if you could be like, if you're forced to eat raw eggs, then be like, oh, by the way, don't listen to this podcast. You know what you should be? They yeah. absolutely would. Or just I be think. like, listen, you've got two options. In one hand, I have an iPod. Mm-hmm. In the other hand, I have 40 raw eggs. <laughs> <laughs> the choice is yours. <laughs> You're eating one of these things. That's right. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks for listening, guys. Next week? Something else. Don't know. Probably a topic. What do we got next week? Well, there'll definitely be a Star Wars trailer to talk about. Oh, so okay. that, at the very least, will be a... Nice. Will be very dab for us, for all of us. so dab. Yeah, good. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.